my cameras on. I was gonna say I could technically I could mount a mic to the top of that if you wanted an backup just in case. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. I think we're money, dude. I'm OCD. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. No, but I think I think we're good. This this sounds good. I think we're money. This does sound good. Yep. A little yeah. bit of static. Yeah, but... you, what would that be from? Uh, is it the mic moving? Hold on, let me see. Oh yeah, it's the cord. I think it was. Mo- no. Hmm. What could be? It sounds like Bluetooth interference. Yeah. Let me turn. Yo. This. Let me see. Test, 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 test. No. Nope. Let's put my on. Yo. Test, test, test. Test. Better. Seems to be better. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, I think you're right. Yeah, I don't hear it no more. That's what it sounded like with Bluetooth interference. I would never even know that. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> I've been sitting here for days like, what the fuck? All right, man. We finally made it happen. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate no problem, you, dog. Appreciate you letting me come to the crib, man. Hey, no problem. The, You've, the, uh, the Casa uh, de la Remington. Yes, uh, I was going to say, I follow you on social media and... You reached out to me a few times to be on this thing, yeah. and uh, dude, I've been so busy. So it was like, you know, I felt like I owed you one. You hit me up, perfect weekend. Hey man, I uh, it's funny because I was coming to Houston and I was making a list of my top ten things I wanted to do work wise. You were number one, bro. Hell yeah, Anabar is my favorite, just literal protein bar slash snack slash everything. And been following you before Anabar though, way before Anabar. Yeah, yeah, been. Uh, let's see. I don't know. We we probably go way way back to probably when you were like uh, before even the anabolic recipe started becoming a thing. This is like back when you were just a guy getting shredded and doing the whole like experimentation on yourself thing on YouTube. We might want to. Our mics are picking each other up. Okay. We should probably gain them down. Okay. Yeah, let's do. Let's do restart right. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, all right. I was noticing that during. I was because that's one thing. Because uh, we start talking louder as soon as we're like. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So let me see here. I was gonna say I thought the game might have been a little loud. Alright, talk. Talk, chest, test, test. Talk, test, talk test. like loud. Test, 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 test. Okay. Check, check. Okay. That'll be that that should be much better. Cause your your producer can because these have a ton yeah. of quality, so we record light and then he can gain them up. Only thing is like you probably yeah, you'd probably turn me up a little bit now here because I can't hear In your ear? Yeah. Do you guys hear? Oh, where are you at? Where are you at? Uh you're two? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Is that better? Alright, yeah, we're in the same spot. Yeah, I just want to make sure our mics aren't uh yeah, I want you to have good quality here. You can turn me up a little more. On the in your headset? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There we go. That feel, that's okay. that's even better. Let me get mine where it's at. Okay. Yeah, I was hearing you through my headset. Here, before we I stop this recording, we'll just do a tech like I'll just like talk. Okay. Make sure make sure we're good. Yeah, the editor can chop this out too. Okay. The first see. three minutes or whatever. Yo. We'll start over. Yo, yo. What is going on, man? Yeah, yeah. Better, see, better, better, better. See how it's like before it was like yeah. halfway up the fucking thing. It's yeah. picking me up. It's because we start we start talking normal and we versus before we were talking down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I think that'll be good. Okay, that sounds better. All right. Here, I'll just restart all of it. That way, you don't have to fuck with it. Too. I, I'm, I'm, I become more of a stickler now that I, you know, now that there's so many different options out there to listen to. It's like when it's bad audio, you're like, fuck, dude. Oh, dude. And, can't uh, do it. I mean, I do uh, a lot of music. Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, I li- really learned, like, all about it. Well, um, dude, appreciate you having me out to the crib, man. No problem at all, man. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, Houston, first time here, work wise, I was like, there's only a few things I want to get done, but you were top of the list because. Anabar is hands down my favorite protein bar. Our team is obsessed with Anabar recipes. Thank you. Clients love everything, man. Thank and, you. Uh, a YouTube follower for man, I don't even know how many years, but it was before before you were like the Anabar recipe guy. Before yep. Anabar, it was probably like Final Boss days, maybe uh, when you were doing like keto and all that carb stuff. cycling and all that, all that stuff. <laughs> Experimentation. Yeah, it's crazy. Like uh, the transitions of the channel. What I've been on YouTube now since. I think it was like late, no, early 2017. Was it yeah. 26? I'm losing track now, but yeah. it's been forever. So the channel's been through like a ton of different uh, iterations. Cause it's funny, I was talking to someone about this the other day, but it's like, 
I look at the people, the people that were big when I started, very few of them are left. Mm, wow. Very few. Um, they were able to make it even consistent. And the ones that were really big when I started aren't near as uh, big as they were. Yeah. And they've like fallen. Like everybody's kids. I think it's very hard on YouTube to actually like maintain. So, so are you, <laughs> it reminds me of like a quarterback class. Like yeah. coming in, you know, and you're looking and you're like, oh man, only one dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's like eight quarterbacks drafted and now there's only one guy who's still doing it. That's you. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there's there's still a few. There's still a few, but like. Who did you come in, in with? Like, who were some of the names? Uh, let me see. Um, How do I, like uh, Travis S. Travis what, S. Do you yeah. remember Travis S? That name sounds really familiar. Yeah. So he was, um, so, because what I'm thinking is like, there's like levels to it. Like, it's weird. I think having 100,000 subscribers now is way different than having 100,000. In 2017, big time, right? Yeah. So it was like when I was coming up. I remember um, there wasn't as many people in these spaces either. Yeah. Right. Because it was like a fitness was Chris Jones, which he's oh, kind yeah. of making a resurgence now. Yeah, I like Chris. Yeah, yeah, because like every, I mean, even my channel does it. It's like you go through peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. Yeah. Where like like you're on top of the world, and it seems like you're crushing it. Like at the height of the pandemic and everything. Yeah. I was sore, and it's like you know, then you have some lulls, and then you have like it goes back up, and it's. Uh, I feel like a lot of people can't really roll with the lows very well. Mm. And um, there's people, I remember uh, there were people that would like, were popping up that were new. I remember there was one guy in particular that was uh, making videos about me, talking, uh, you know, those drama type videos, making videos sure. about me. And then, um, yeah, he just, he quit because of quote unquote mental health or something. <laughs> I was like, karma's a bitch. Who, who would have seen that coming? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny you're you're uh, you're spot on with that because I do see a lot of guys who kind of disappear into the background. And you kind of look at their their following, their views, or whatever, and you notice that they've gone way down. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they just lost drive to do it because it's not as easy or whatever. They hit a wall. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to do something when it's always paying off. One hundred percent. It's yeah. hard. It's, it's harder to do it when uh, you're seeing no return on it. Like I was trying to tell someone that the other day, they were asking me about, um, what were we, who was I talking to? I was talking to these uh, music producers and um, I like had been working with this uh, website where like people that make beats will go and you can like promote your beats and you put them out, people buy them. And uh, I was trying to tell them, I was like, when I did YouTube, I like, it took me I, a year before I even like really got like money from it, mm -hmm. but I consistently did it because I knew there was like an end vision and knew what I wanted and I told myself like this is going to be a non-negotiable I'm going to do these videos every single week no matter what Yeah. and then it eventually paid off but like I think a lot of people aren't willing to put in the work in the beginning that's required because like unless I mean some people get lucky and you can be an overnight success yeah, you hit a viral video yeah but even then I feel like you hit a viral video now like it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful especially if it's like a uh, TikTok or something right if, if it's like a, a one off Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't actually align with who you are, or your brand, or what exactly. you're trying to sell. Exactly. Like it could be just something random, and it goes crazy. But then the next one you make has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. People are like, "Oh, I'm not watching that because I only followed you for that one random." Exactly. Thing. Yeah. Exactly. And that's like uh, what my channel beginning was like. Uh, I remember I was putting out videos. I didn't know like what I was doing. My videos were so bad in the beginning, but I was just trying everything. I remember uh, for the longest time I would look at my uh, YouTube dashboard and it would tell me the amount of money I made. Mm. And it was stuck at a penny. And I remember like, dude, it, so I quit looking at it because it was depressing. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're like, what the hell? And then one day randomly I looked at it and it was like, oh, what was it? I always, I forget the number now, but it was like 70 bucks maybe. Oh, And nice. I was like, where did that come from? Mm. And then I scrolled back through my videos because the other thing is too, when I was doing those videos in the beginning, I wouldn't pay attention to how many views or anything they got because it was also depressing. So I just wouldn't pay. I was like, I'm just going to do this no matter what. Yeah, and I, I looked back at some weird, terrible meal prep video I did. It had like 100,000 views. And then something clicked in my head and I was like, I got to do that same video as many times as I can. Mm, mm. So, okay, this, this leads to a, one of the questions I have for you, which was YouTube now, right? Because you're still on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I, I, your videos seem to come out at least like a couple times a week. You're doing reels too. Four right? a week. Short, you put out four YouTube, YouTube videos. videos a week, yes. So, so okay, let's talk about how, how you do that. Because you do a lot, right? Like, I, I mean, my first overall question that I wanted to ask was how do you get it all done? Mm -hmm. Because you got... YouTube, which obviously anybody who's on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, you don't appreciate the work that goes into YouTube. For sure. It's insane. Uh, but then you also have Anna Bar, which we'll talk about. You have Final Boss. You have all your other businesses that you run. But then you're also doing music. Yes. Yep. So how do you get it all done? What, do you, what does that look like? Mm, uh, I was explaining this to someone the other day. I don't have, like, I don't have, at this point in my life, I don't have free time, if that makes sense. Like, um... There's not an evening where I just go sit on the couch and watch TV. Mm. There's not an evening where I go sit and play video games. Mm. Um, 
like right now my number one priority, I would say really number one priority is Anabar, right? That's number one. But then YouTube then has to also be number one priority because we market, I mean, that's how we built Anabar, was Absolutely. through my YouTube, right? Yeah. So um, every video I'm doing on YouTube is also, you know, let's say I put out a video and it gets, I don't know, 10,000, 50, 100,000, whatever it ends up getting, like even if those people don't directly go buy it, now that we've had this big retail push, the word Anabar is in their head now, yes. whether they realize it or not, yeah. subliminally. So now if they're like, we've been crushing retail, so it's like, how many seeds did I plant throughout the course of all those videos where someone's in a store and they're looking, they might even remember that they heard it from my video or anything, yep. but it's in there and they end up trying it. So it's like, uh, those are my two number one priorities. And then um, right now I'm working on, um, I haven't put out a music project in three and a half years and uh, I am working on my next one right now. So all my free time essentially is uh, yeah, you know, my day, and then I mean, before you got here, I was writing music. Earlier, I was up there recording. Um, yeah, I just, mm. it's really, it's uh, other than going on, like last night, I had some people over to watch the fights, but, and I almost do that out of a sense of, uh, per, how do I put it? A sense of, I think I have a big heart, and I think that uh, I give, if I was selfish, I would just work 24 7 because mm. it gives me the most joy, it gives me the most, like, puts fire in me. Um, but, I feel like I owe people near me like some time too. And I think it's actually good for me to, to take some rest. So yeah, I just, um, how do I get it done? I just wait, like there's not, a, if I woke up, I couldn't tell you the last time I woke up on a day and didn't do anything work related. Mm -hmm. I feel so guilty and I like, I hate myself. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I'm so hard on myself and I've just made certain things like non-negotiables. So it's like the end of our stuff gets done no matter what. YouTube videos get filmed no matter what. Music gets done no matter what. And you know, is this, is this always been how you are? Um, in a lot of ways, yes. Uh, but I've gone through phases cause, uh, I mean, I just recently got sober from alcohol mm. and weed and everything like 155 days ago. So, so I, I saw that, but what was, what was your, like, what was the habit like before? Was it, was it bad? Were you drinking a lot? I mean, cause you're working a lot. Right. So right, people right. Were like, how would you be able to, um, drink? here's the way I describe it is that like the alcohol wasn't. I wasn't like an everyday like alcohol drinker. Like I wasn't what you would probably call an alcoholic. But when I would drink, I was a binge drinker. So you drink a lot. Like it took me. I mean, I had like, I mean, dude, 10, ten to fifteen, maybe twenty drinks. And I would, uh, yeah, I was. It, it got. Um, it always starts out too. I've, I've had problems with substances my entire life. I don't know what it what it's been about me, but it's like um, when I was in high school, like I guess the group of friends I hung out with, really small town. So like uh, where I'm from, Hawking County is like. Uh, like, what do you call it? Um, hair, like heroin capital of like, mm. like per capita. It's like some of the highest like prescription pill heroin. Why is that? Is it like a um, I, dude? I mean, it's uh, where I'm from is very low income. Okay. Very poor, um, and there's just like nothing to do. Mm, so like it's filling up time. Yeah. So it's like there's just nothing to do, and uh, yeah, I just everybody around me was uh was just doing that stuff so like i remember going to a party because i moved uh, about 30 minutes from home up the road to lancaster i remember moving up there i didn't have any friends or anything and then an old buddy from high school would came in he's like hey we're having a party tonight i'm like all right i go to his like party i notice no one's drinking I'm like what are you doing they were all just doing pills I'm like here do you want one I'm like sure and next thing you know it's like the best you've ever felt like no problems you feel incredible yeah. and it's just like and then that like i didn't have any friends at the time so you start hanging out with those people and that's just what they do so then Hey, like, I'm going to go get some. Do you want one? Sure. And then, like, next thing you know, you don't have them and you're getting sick. Mm. Like, you're withdrawing. And then, what, like, what, what was it? What was the what kind of pills? Uh, Percocet 30s. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You Percocet. ever tried heroin? No. See, I've never tried heroin. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> there was a, what I like to say is that uh, I've done a lot of drugs, but there was always, like, a boundary with me. Mm. I wasn't going to do, like, crack. I wasn't going to do heroin. Like, I don't, there was a boundary. <laughs> As if that makes it better. <laughs> but, like, uh, I had standards. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, I was never going to, like, put a needle in my arm. Or do yeah, anything like scary. that yeah um yeah it was uh yeah like and then you know i got off of percocets and then uh you know you start smoking weed and then like you know gummies and then like i've just always gone through like these weird phases um but you have a strong work ethic do you think maybe the like the intensity that you attack work is kind of the intensity you attack substances when given the opportunity i think that i'm very obsessive compulsive yeah i think that uh when i'm into something i'm into it like uh like when i quit so when I was working, uh, it, so I worked at Sprint before I got into YouTube, right? And um, I worked at Sprint and uh, I was like salesman of the year, three years, three of the years that I worked there. And I was very good, like 
anything I do and I really apply myself, I get, I get obsessed with it. And then I remember when I quit my job, because I eventually went to part-time when I was doing my YouTube videos on the side. And then um, when I went full-time with YouTube, I didn't know what to do with my time. Mm. So I went like 180 some days in a row, shot, filmed, edited, and put out a video every single day. <sighs> didn't miss a day. Jesus. Yep. Yeah. That, I mean, how, how did you... <laughs> yeah. I can't even begin to understand how you would do that. Because <laughs> um, you edited everything, right? You're doing everything yourself? Everything myself, yeah. How much time? I mean, like... On, on I mean, dude, every... I mean, I guess it depends. Uh, you film it and then edit it, yeah. release it, film yeah. it, edit it. Yeah. I mean, things it. were a little simpler back then. Yeah. So the cameras were a little simpler. Uh, the videos weren't as... Uh, what you call... Uh, back then, it was a lot of... I did a lot of vlogs. So I had like a little mm -hmm. pocket camera I'd walk around and shoot with. Um, it was a little easier to edit. Um, did some like... Because it could all depend. Like if it was like a Wednesday, like maybe I'm doing a meal prep video. So I'm filming that whole thing. And then that's going to take me literally all day mm -hmm. between the shoot and the edit. Yes. And then maybe... Because um, I was doing... I would do like one Q&A a week. So if I knew it was a Friday night and I was going to go be with friends or something, I'd put the Q&A. That was easy. Answer questions, talk yeah. about, put it out. Easy. And then sometimes... You know, maybe I'd go on a, a long rant about carb cycling, you know. So yeah. I had some easy ones I could throw in, but um, yeah, it was, uh, I remember one time, it was, uh, I was telling the story the other day, I had a video and I was editing it and for some reason my computer shut down and it didn't save. So it was like 10 o'clock at night and I was exhausted and that oh, video man. didn't save. And I had to come to the, I was like, do I, it was like day 90, do I break the streak <laughs> or do I edit this thing from the ground up again? And I thought, I fucking yeah. edited it. Hell yeah. And edited <laughs> it out. <laughs> yeah, and I remember how I remember how hard it was to like stop the video streak too. Oh, sure, it was very hard because I, I went from that and then went to every other day videos, mm -hmm. and it got uh, yeah, and that was a very hard. Like I'm one of those people like it's like for me to break a habit is so hard. So how how did you do the alcohol and, and pills? Like how did you break? Um, it? Jesus Christ, I uh, I kind of just like hit rock bottom. Really, what was like? What um, was? dude, I was um, it was weird because it was like uh, when me and my uh, girlfriend got together. I was actually sober at the time when me and her got together because uh, I just came off of like like another problem with alcohol where I was like in Vegas and blacked out and got into a fight and really mm -hmm. hurt my hand. Oof. Um, yeah, it was really bad. Really bad. Like some, like through the grace of God, I've yeah. like not gotten arrested or in trouble or nothing through the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But um, I was just like, you know, sober and then like me and her met and then it got to where like, all right, like, let me just have like a drink or two. And then it just turned into like, just, it's when I'm drinking, all that I'm thinking about is when I can drink again. Yeah. Like if it's Monday, I'm, I'm thinking like, I can't wait for Friday to get here. Dude, and if I can find a good excuse on a Thursday, if I can find an excuse on a Sunday. So it was just like, I would grind all week. And then like that weekend came and it just switch flipped in my brain. And it's like, it is go time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just culminated in just like, I don't know. Dude, I think about like the 10 worst things in my life that have ever happened or I've ever done. And all of them were alcohol related. Yeah. Um, woke up and my G-Wagon was uh, in the garage on a rim. I drove it home on a rim, not even remembering, like popped the tire, busted the whole front end. Oh my it's like God. insane, yeah. I haven't even got that car anymore because I wrecked it. Like, Holy I, I wrecked it twice. Jesus. Yeah, and like I don't even like, uh, I don't know, I just like, I never drank and drove, but something about alcohol when I would have a certain amount in me would just like, something flips. Yeah. Yeah. And I am just like, not the same person. Sometimes I wonder if it's, because I have a lot of friends. I also have like a very strange tolerance to alcohol. Like mm -hmm. I can drink like five drinks or 50 and I'm going to feel the same on five or 50. Like I go out, have two drinks, I get a buzz, but then I can keep drinking and drinking and nothing ever gets deeper into it. It's like a weird like level that I hit that I just can't ever get past no matter how much I drink, right? Take shots. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like that <laughs> feels the same. But I wonder if it's genetic. Dude, so there's you know a, I mean? it's actually this funny thing. You know Jordan Peterson, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he had a, uh, he was talking about it on a podcast once, and he said, uh, I forget the percentages, but there's a small percentage of the population. So for the majority of people, alcohol is a sedative. So like, mm -hmm. you can drink, have a couple drinks, you can do a test, you can test your heart rate, and you can see, and like, it'll go down for most people. Yeah. There's a small percentage of people, and these people are most likely to become alcoholics or, you know, abuse it. And uh, when you drink, your heart rate goes up, and it's a stimulant. Oh, I think it's a stimulant for me. I did the, uh, I did the test with my Fitbit, and that's definitely me. <laughs> like, like, cause it's weird because other people will be like passing out. Like, I'm that guy that can black out, but you can't even really tell I'm drunk. Oh, okay. But I'm just like not there. Yeah, yeah. Just head like just you get fired up though, dude. Right? Yeah, see, that's dude. me too. But the thing is, like, I'll get, I get happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like all, all, all on caffeine. That's what it feels like. Where I'm just like, oh man, yeah. I need to work out. Like, I feel great. Let's mm -hmm. party. And then I'm like, oh, I'll take another shot. But I'm like, nothing changes. Like, I, I could out drink most people. Yeah. Right? Just because I don't, I don't black out. I don't I, like literally remember every detail. It's so weird. It's it's the strangest thing. Yeah, I was uh 
I mean, alcohol made me incredibly happy. Happiest I've ever been in my life. Alcohol was euphoric for me until I got angry. Mm. And then it was just like... Do you know what makes you angry when you're drinking or is it just oh. like you just don't... Um, I, uh, I have... Uh, I mean, if I feel disrespected, mm. uh, if I feel like uh, disrespected by anybody, you know, like if I feel like someone's... Yeah, I'm, I'm just very... I'm very, uh, I'm very quick to physical violence. Yeah. Very quick. Is it... Yeah, I mean, is it because, because you have a, a like, I, I get recognized in airports, believe it or not. Like, I got a few thousand followers, right? You probably get recognized. I do. Everywhere. I do. So with that comes, does it does it happen where someone's like, hey, you're out, or someone's like trying to test you because they're like, they know who you are, or whatever? Most of the time it was, uh, like, like honestly, the majority of the time is uh, I'd be out with, like, my girl. Yeah. And, like, it'd be another guy trying to, like, talk to her or something. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, and I just... Uh, I sober I might have like hey That's man tough. it's all good like you know like I because it would be usually like, like one time like I went, just went to the bathroom I came back yeah and there was a guy like I watched him like stand beside her at the bar and then like bump her with his shoulder like intentionally <sighs> and then like oh like messing with her and I just yeah. see her turn and like give him a disgusted look and sober I might have walked up and just been like what's going on man what the yeah, heck are you like, doing relax like yeah. get out of here but like I was drunk, so I ran up and threw him into the bar. And all his friends stood up. And I'm trying to buy ten guys, and I'm ready to fight all of them. Yeah. And luckily, a guy was a subscriber that was also a bouncer, and he like got me out of there before I fought ten guys. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. The universe is interesting, man. It's like uh, bring, brings you like all these because like you think about situations like that, you're just like, why is my girl <laughs> like getting yeah. a beautiful girl? I'm, you know, whatever. But like, still, it's like beautiful girls go out, and guys oftentimes are too. You know, mm -hmm. intimidated to talk to him, right? So, but it's like, mm -hmm. why is my girl getting bothered, or why is this happening? And now all of a sudden, all my weaknesses, whatever you want to call them, yep. my struggles are being tested. Yeah, right. It's like the craziest thing. Yeah, and I've gotten lucky because, like, uh, I said a lot. Like, there's, I shouldn't even be sitting here right now. Mm -hmm. I should be. I should not be sitting here. Uh, I, literally. But like, I always say this. Like, um, it's like I get taught lessons in life, and then like. I, I learned the lesson, but it doesn't really affect me in a like a really negative way, if that makes sense. Like, mm. like for example, I wrecked my uh, G wagon. Um, cost me all in like twenty thousand dollars to fix. Mm. Um, I got it back after a month in the shop. Uh, a week later, I was in the Kroger parking lot and it locked up on me. And it was like another thousand dollars. It was like something else failed. And in my head, I'm like, how? How much, how much stuff did I like half break that now this thing's gonna be a money pit? Mm. Like, right? Mm. It was like freaking me out. So I was like, all right, let me get on and like look for another car. So I was like looking at a different car, found one I liked, and I was like real nervous. I'm like, I'm gonna call this dealership and I'm gonna be like, you know, what can we do? Like, are they even gonna want it because of this, whatever? I call them and for some reason there's nothing on the Carfax that gave me full value. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, 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 so I get taught. I'm just looking out for you. <laughs> I, I, dude, I, I swear, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say, God, I feel like. I, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like looking out for me in the craziest of ways. Well, because there's clearly bigger missions that you haven't finished yet. Of course, right? That's what it ultimately comes down. And to. And, and here's the thing: you ask me how I uh, how I was able to like get sober. Honestly, and this way I kind of put it is that I think my entire life I went to Catholic school growing up, um, and I always kind of despised it, mm -hmm. and it made me not really like religion at all, and. Um, as I got older, I mean, when I was in college, I was like a really hardcore atheist. And um, at some point I kind of came out of that, but I wasn't, I don't know, it just wasn't something I ever thought about, God or anything like that. And then um, this time when I got sober, as cliche as it might sound, like I started praying for the first time since I was really like a kid. And um, I re and it's so weird because now I'm so content. It's because like before it was, it was hard to explain because like, I remember having conversations like this and they're like, you should be so happy. Mm. Like, look, look at where you're at in life, look at what you've done. And I would like, and it, I, it's not that I wasn't happy, but there was just something missing. And now it's almost like a, I was trying to fill a God shaped hole in my heart with whatever was around alcohol, mm. pills, you know what I mean? For like sure. weed. And, um, now that I'm just like sober, like it, if you would have asked me like a year ago, like go out to dinner with some people and, Try not to drink. Go on a vacation and don't drink. Like it, it would have seemed so asinine. Or, or go here, even if you're not drinking, and don't bring a bunch of gummies with you to take. Mm -hmm. 
or don't go to the the head shop and buy a bunch of kratom pills that you like i was always looking for some type of buzz because i wasn't fine just like sober mm. and now i'm just like why have i not been like this my whole life this is i feel mm. so clear mm. and i'm able to work even harder now hmm yeah i call it every man's battle Every mm-hmm. man's battle. Because I think, so happiness is like a weird thing. I've been, I've been thinking, funny enough, thinking a lot about happiness recently. Um, I don't know, how, how old are you? 33. Okay, so I'm a little older than you. I'm, I'm approaching 40. <laughs> but you look great. Thanks, man. All that was Anna bars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you get to, I hope this is not the halfway point of my life, right? But you get to a point where you look at your life and you go, man, this gives me happiness. This gives me happiness. But there's always... There, there's always something, at least for I feel like for most guys, especially guys like us who are driven, you're motivated, you're you're willing to outwork, you know, your your former self, you're willing to outwork anybody, you do you're willing to do whatever it takes to be something or successful. But happiness is an interesting thing. I think happiness and fulfillment go hand in hand. And really, I don't know if worldly things can fill every hole, right? I don't I don't know if like money, money can make you happy for sure, mm-hmm. right? Gives you happiness. Children definitely like they've given me so much happiness but what i've realized as a father now too is like as much happiness as they give me there's still something that i can't get in this world right that's going to completely make me feel whole right and, and i guess that's god mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. i call it god right yeah, i call it god for sure but i think everyone out there like we look at the biggest names and doing anything there is a part of them if they haven't found it yet there's still a part of them that they're trying to fill and i think it is god i think that's what it is ultimately and I think we're in a, uh, you know, and I've, I've, here's the other thing too, is just being sober. It's like, I'm just like, I'm thinking a lot more. My brain's working a lot better. Mm. So I've really pondered a lot of things deeply. Um, we live in a society that like uh, pushes God away completely. Yes. Completely. And it's so, it's regardless of like what you believe, right? And I think uh, it was even, a, I think I heard this from Jordan Peterson. He was talking, he was like, even if, like, you don't believe God exists, even the act of living your life as if he does is only going to improve it. Right. And I think we live in this, uh, I mean, dude, you just look, I mean, just, I don't even got to say anything. You just look around. Like, <laughs> you got to say nothing. Everything, everything just... <laughs> Go to the mall. <laughs> dude, yes. Like, everything seems to be getting just, like, so, so out of touch. And I just, uh, I like to think, because all these people are just, like... I just seem lost mm. and I'm just like because uh, the thing is even though I had my struggles like I was always grounded by my work and my purpose so regardless like no matter how hungover I was or no matter what happened or whatever I was always still I always still had a purpose right and a lot of people don't have that and I think in lack of that if you don't have a purpose or something that gets you up out of bed every day and you don't have faith or a belief mm. or anything what do you have not much. You cling to these weird ideologies that are out now, and you like because you, you're you're trying to find purpose, you're trying to find meaning in your life. What you have is a, is a massive gaping hole, right? Or Precisely holes, and then of course you're trying to fill those with whatever. Fill in the blank. It could be mm-hmm. alcohol. It could be. I mean, look at data, right? Data says physical health is deteriorating, as is mental health. Yeah, kids are killing themselves more than ever. Yeah, kids are getting fatter yeah. faster than ever. Right. So clearly there's something missing. And if you look at historically what was there, you know, years ago and what there what isn't there now, I'd say it's God, strong uh, values, yeah. right? Family values and an emphasis on rewarding hard work and smart work and winning, right? Yes. Yes. Those things get kicked out and all of a sudden people are like it's like you you just shattered things in a million pieces and people are trying to put themselves back together because they don't have that compass that was those things and everybody's so coddled yes like uh, I remember uh, I remember clearly the joke was when I was growing up was like I mean everybody's like it's the participation trophy thing mm. but like now now it's funny to like look forward and you're like well maybe that did do a number <laughs> like because because there's a there's a part of life where it's like if everybody thinks they're owed everything for free like I'm never going to be in the NBA No, you know what I mean. Like I'm just that's just not me. Now, can I? I mean, I'm really good on a computer. Sure, I I know how to edit videos. I understand like uh, angle. Like you know, there's all these things I am good at though. And I think it's a side of me. Some people think they're owed all this respect and recognition, having not done anything, right? They just think by default that 
they're entitled mm. to a bunch of stuff. They're entitled to make X amount of money. They're entitled to not have to work. They're entitled to literally control your speech in regards yes. like all this shit. Entitled to not be offended. Yeah, right? dude, ever. ever, ever, dude. And it's like, um, it's like the, the I think it was Joe Rogan who was saying this, but it's like literally the hardest thing you've ever been through is still just the hardest thing you've ever been through. So if you've been helicopter parented your whole life or the hardest thing you ever went through is, um, I don't know, you had to cancel your sweet 16 birthday party and move it a week ahead. You know what I mean? Like, like, yes. So, so that's what I say. Like, <laughs> like as, that was a good one. as much as that's, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And, and as much as like, um, I think about this a lot too. Like I've been through a lot in my life and, um, I wouldn't change a single thing though. Mm. I wouldn't change mm-hmm. anything because like now, I mean, I just had uh, like a week ago, it was like a week and a half ago, a massive water leak in here. They had to like cut the ceiling out, like lots of money to fix. Um, that didn't even bother me at all. Like mm-hmm. not even the slightest little bit. I'm like, well, it's okay. Cause on the hard meter, it's probably there's not, nothing. It's not that big a deal. It's nothing. Yeah. But if like, you've never been through anything, you've never actually pushed yourself. I mean, Shit, some of the grinds I've done for uh, YouTube, the grind I'm doing now to try to get this project out with Anabar, the GNC, like the content, all, at, the grind I'm on right now might be the craziest grind I've ever been on in my life. Mm. But it's like everything I went through prepared me for it. Yeah. So nothing about it. I mean, battle tested. Yeah. yeah. Some some people might. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I know people personally um, that I'm close with that like they are required. Like they can't work on a weekend. They refuse to. That's their time to. You know, whatever, right? Like, me time. T- yeah, you text them on the weekend for like, uh, you know, and like, it's like they're like, no, yeah. or they they go on a vacation. Do not they're disturb. Like, yeah, it's like it's like it's like I am like after this date, you can't contact me until this date, and I'm I'm just out of office, and I don't get it. Yeah, because that would strip like I just I I just don't get it. Well, that yeah, it, it you said the word coddled. I wanted to, before I forgot. I want to say when coddling has been introduced in the in replacement uh, or replacing clarity okay mm-hmm. because clarity for the youth or us or whoever gives you a path because there's a there's a quote if you if you tell a fish to climb a tree he'll live his whole life thinking he's an idiot huh. right because he can't climb a fucking tree yeah right but he's got skills he just needs clarity here's what you could do here's your opportunities the youth we I say the youth whatever generations that are slightly younger than us or, or our age just lack clarity and they've been given coddling. And that's a huge reason why their direction is off, their purpose is off, or they don't have a purpose, their fulfillment is non-existent. Mm -hmm. There's no clarity. They have no idea what they should be doing. They think, because they saw Remington James with a million subscribers and killing it and selling protein bars, that somehow you're a bad person. (laughs) You got lucky. Yeah, dude, yeah. (laughs) And I should be better off because Somehow I'm entitled to your success mm-hmm. because you look like me, you sound like me, you work out like me, so I should be like you. Mm-hmm. It's just not. That's not clarity. That's mm-hmm. commonly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There was a point in my life I remember uh, when I was younger. I was uh, I was very. Oh, what's wrong? I remember I would like be watching like a commercial on Nickelodeon. I'd see kids in the commercials, and I'd be like, "Why are they in that night? It's not me, mm-hmm. right?" I, I would see a guy in like a Lambo. We gotta pause. Just remember that thought. Sorry. Yep. Pause, and then we'll hit it. Hit it. Huh, well, it looks like this is still going. Yeah, still recording? Yeah, but I'll restart it just to be safe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, so Nickelodeon, Lambo. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'd be watching like uh, Nickelodeon as a kid, and I'd see a kid in a uh, commercial, and I'd be like, jealous. Mm-hmm. Like, like, why isn't that me? Why does he get that and not me? And then I got a little older, and I'd see a guy in a Lambo, and it pissed me off. I'd be like, who is this guy? Whatever. And I still remember like when the mindset shift happened because it went from see the guy in the Lambo, get upset about it, like F him to like, I want to talk to him and figure out how he got that. Yes. Like, like I want to know like curiosity. It went from, it went from like jealousy and like uh, hatred is a strong word, but you know, jealousy and what to say? Hatred. Envy. Envy. There we go. Yeah, yeah. That's a better word. And then, then it went to like respect and like, give me five minutes of your time. I want to like quiz you. Yes. Like, like just give me some, give me some game. And uh, even to this day, like I just like I love people that are doing better than me. I love it yes. because I, I just learned so much. Yes, that's why I'm doing podcasts. <laughs> I want to learn from the best. Yeah, right. I mean, because it, 
I look at it like this. I may never, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever become the most successful person in the world. I don't know if that even exists because there's always going to be somebody like Elon Musk becomes the richest guy and then Bezos is the richest. Like it's just mm-hmm. back and forth. But success tells me that things are possible. Simple. Of course. Right? And when things are possible, I feel instead of things being impossible, I'm now possible. Right? Right. So I can look at someone and say, well, he did it. Worst case scenario, I can learn something from him and I can be slightly better as me, right? I may never be at your level, and that's cool, but I can get better from you, right? Right. And that's that should be inspiring. Mm-hmm. I mean, that you should feel like, fuck, man, you got YouTube, Instagram, all these things, and it's like, there are so many people doing big things out there, and it's accessible. I mean, think about, like, not that long ago, when we were kids, I mean, I, I'm a little bit older, but still, similar, similar age range, where when I was 13 years old, if I want to learn something, where do I gotta go? Exactly. Library. Exactly. <laughs> I gotta go through the you know, the A's, the B's, the C's, like I gotta do the research on the computer. Like it wasn't like it is today. You got massive opportunity. Well, that's what uh I always tell I try to always tell people this. Like, um, and it's crazy about people that don't listen. Everything that I learned, I learned from YouTube. I learned oh, yeah. like like I didn't people go to school for video editing and film production. I taught myself on YouTube. Mm-hmm. People go to school to learn how to mix vocals do audio production all that stuff and that that was a hard six months but i learned i taught myself how to do all of it that's crazy like every bit of it um maybe in the business the brand like photoshop i had no idea what i was doing now like you know i'm not the best but like you know, you know yeah like more I, than most yeah like I, I have all these skills that i acquired all just being self-taught that's and all it. you had to pay was time invested. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And um, I mean, I remember uh, sitting there and having just YouTube pulled up and just like video after video. I remember I'd be taking uh, flights and I'd be on a flight and I would download like audio production. Um, it'd be like a three hour seminar from the guy that mixed uh, Lil Uzi Vert's uh, uh, that's that I don't really care if you yeah. cry. Like <laughs> yeah. he, he's a guy that like mixed that. So he goes in like, all right, here's what we did in all these different parts of it. And I'm just like, just like, Sponge. Yeah, and it was yeah. just like over, like like watch them three or four times. Like your favorite song, by the way, that I like is uh, "Bring a Couple Bottles and Put Them All on Me." Yeah, all on me, all on me. Great yeah, song, dude. Great Thank song. You. Uh, Love that song. Hey man, compared to club banger. Here's the thing though, dude. Compared to what I'm making now, like I hate even listening to that stuff. Oh, I'm sure. I have leveled like uh, can't wait. I have leveled up, and I'm not even just saying this. Like I do not like to toot my own horn at all. I I like to be 100 percent real and honest. To, like. I am like the stuff I am making now, like this project I'm going to drop, no one will be able to listen to this. And like, if you have something bad to say, all that old stuff, I didn't write back then. Mm. It was all freestyle. Everything was, I never wrote. Um, I don't think I, I wasn't as confident then. I didn't believe in myself as much. Um, I didn't, uh, I wanted everything to be easy. Like, cause I, you know, I was, editing, I was still doing a lot when I was doing that, right? Yeah. So like, um, the idea was, all right, get in the studio, hit record, like, like, what sounds good? Recorded? Did that sound good? All right, and then next line, next line. It just, oh, it wasn't wow. really well thought out yeah, at yeah. all. Um, and then just recently, I had no plans on doing music again. I told myself at one point after the last, because like the last project I did that that song was on, um, it was a. Uh, I was like, just finished it up when I moved here. I moved here at the uh, end of 2019, so I was finishing up in like February of 2020. And then um, I was getting ready to film some music videos and do that whole thing again. Boom, pandemic, boom, lockdowns, boom, COVID. So I ended up just kind of saying, screw it. Dropped the project, didn't really promote it. And then um, shortly after that, dropped the cookbook. And then like the whole trajectory of everything I was doing changed. Then Anna Bar, and then I was like, that was fun. That was like a childhood dream and I really loved doing it. But like, if that's not making me money, is it a waste of time? Mm. Right? Mm. And then um, it wasn't until very recently where uh, I was kind of, right when I quit alcohol, I was just kind of in a weird spot. And I was like, I just need to put some of this down. And then- um, So you like music though, you love it. Dude, dude, um, how do I explain it? Um, I was telling someone this the other day. There is nothing I've ever done in my entire life, ever, that gives me the same feeling mm. as music. Damn. Nothing, like, and it's almost, uh, it's better than any drug I've ever taken. Damn. Yes, I'm a, like right now, my OCD is probably, probably what this is, but it's, um, I am like, if you knew, if you knew what the music part of my life was like right now, you might not even believe it. Like, mm-hmm. just the the amount of time, the amount of I don't watch TV, I don't play video games, I don't like I wake up in the morning, whatever demo I'm working on at that point in time goes on repeat, and it is on repeat 
all day until I have to record. And then when I'm not recording, I put it back on repeat. <laughs> and then between clips, it's on repeat. And then like every like every second that I'm able to that isn't my other obligations, like that is all I am doing. Mm. Dude, I think you hit a big point though because I feel like at some level, if like you ultimately like, I, I just bought a DJ uh, board, right? Turn okay, I want to learn how to DJ. I, I oh, just yeah. love like running parties. I like having yeah. the box. People say I know how to put good music together when I'm just mm-hmm. playing around. I don't know shit about it. Yeah, but it gives me like a excitement, mm-hmm. right? Where I'm like, I I would go. I want to do some. I have a bunch of friends who own clubs and stuff. I was like, I want to go like just be a DJ at a club yeah. a bunch for free. I'm not. It's not about money for me. Exactly. I just want to fucking do it. Exactly. Right? Like, I have this, like, I can't get rid of this obsession in my head. It's been going on for years. So I finally am like, all right, my kids are enough or, you know, old enough where I can actually set aside a couple hours to start doing it. But to be great at something like that, what you described, mm-hmm. that's it. Like, people ask me how, because I, I was overweight at one point, right? Hundred, almost, almost 75 pounds overweight. I saw that. Yeah. So I, uh, I was obsessed like that with mm-hmm. losing it, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's all I fucking thought about. Dominated all the your time. mind. All the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. And when people come to me and they're like, man, I can't seem to lose this weight, I go, are you, are you obsessed with it? Yep. Do you desire it more than anything else? Because mm-hmm. it ultimately, your level of desire is what's gonna, gonna be your ceiling. Of course. Like your desire for your music and to create and to produce and all the things you're doing is clearly at a very high level, right? Mm-hmm. And, it's a, and it's in some cases an obsession, but really that's what it takes if you wanna be at a high level for something yeah. or, or an elite level for something. Yeah, and it's, uh... Oh, what do you call it? I think that um, the missing sauce too, in, in a lot of ways, is I think people try to, I mean, whether it's a business, content creation, whatever it is you're doing, the secret sauce is actually believing that if you were to make it, that you deserve to be there. Mm. If like, like if believing, because in my old music, I remember it was all like, how do I put it? Like, I, I, I love it, it's a point in time. But it's like, it, at that point, it was like, I was making music because I told myself like, the rewards from this could be big. Mm. I do love music, I love how it makes me feel, but like the rewards from it could be big. Like, and I would say things to try to sound cool. I would like, kind of like, you know, I mean all rappers do it, but you like, yeah, yeah. you like lie. You know what I mean? It's like, this is like yeah. a bunch of fluff. And um, now it's just, uh, and back then I really cared what people thought about me. Yeah, I yeah. really did. And then yeah. somewhere along the line, I just completely, like I don't read. I'm not on social media. Yeah, I, I looked at your Instagram and I was like, I don't really think you're on there that much. Never. <laughs> never. I'm like tagging you and stuff. Dude, and I'm like, I, I want to see Rim, and you're I, like, yeah, I'm not even. Dude, if I open <laughs> if I opened my DMs, you would see that I haven't looked or responded to a DM in probably over a year. It's probably better off that way. I just, uh, I just don't. And I hate to even sound this type of way. I just don't have any. I, I just every time I get on social media, I feel like for some reason it's just like a little bit of poison in my brain. It is. It is. In a sense. Yeah. You, it, I think Rogan said it. He said, like, he never reads comments. Mm-hmm. He's like, because the first, like, you'll read, oh, yeah, you're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome, you piece of shit. Yeah. And then you're fucked. <laughs> Dude, <it's>, uh, <laughs> Your brain's like, what the fuck? Well, well like, like at one point, it's like, you, like I mean, because you first start, like, when you first start doing YouTube, I remember it. Like, you get people praising you, and I'm like, no one's ever praised me my entire life. Yeah, it feels good. It cool. does. Yeah. And then, but if you hold the high ones, like, if they're very important to you, then the shitty ones yes. hold just as much weight, but they hold way more weight though. Yes. And um, yeah, I don't know, you feel the need to clap back, then you're arguing and that looks a certain type of way, and then I'm just... Wanna, yeah, you, you, what is the rule, don't argue with a fool? Yes. Because this is nobody can tell the difference. There right? you go. And yeah. that's that's general population. Like I see, if I, like, we're in the same space or whatever, same same arena, and I, I can see you on social, if I see Remington clapping back at somebody. Mm-hmm. I go, yeah, Rem, get him, right? Yeah, right, I, right. Like, I'm on your you side, get it, right? Of I get it, but, Average people don't do. And I say average people, but I get people what you're saying. YouTube yeah, people what you're saying. or social media people, they see it and they're like, "Oh, look at this guy. He's a tool." Exactly. Yeah. It's an unfortunate part. Yeah, and it's like, um, I think the other day I posted. Uh, I was just like hitting. Uh, I have a little bag upstairs in my boxing gym, and I was just like clapping the uh, the dummy, and I just posted a video. I thought it was cool, and I was just like, <laughs> "I'm just gonna upload this," and I uploaded. And there was a bunch of people that were like, "That's dope," and like, it was something where I actually genuinely was like, yeah. "I." I I really enjoy boxing as a thing I do. And I was like, let me just see what people think about this. And fucking, like, all right, so your form, you need to, like, everybody was a coach. 
And I was just like, yeah. Floyd Mayweather was in the comments. Yeah, I'm like, guys, I'm just working out. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, guys, I'm not fighting Canelo's. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not training to fight Logan Paul. <laughs> like, I'm just, we're just having a little fun. Just working out, dude. That's it. That's it. And everybody's just like, a, it's just so funny because everybody's got advice. Yes. Everybody's. Armchair quarterback. Yeah. And like, and like, I, it's, how do you put it? I, uh, I genuinely try to give advice to people to genuinely try to help them. If you know what you're talking about. Yes. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. I refuse, like, there's one thing I, I, I refuse to talk out of my ass. I refuse to speak on things I don't know about. I refuse, uh, yeah, I, I just have a, I don't know. I just, I don't even know what you would call it. I don't even, I don't even know if that's, uh, I think it's a lot of self-awareness. Okay. I, yeah. And recently I've developed a lot more of that. Yeah. Um, so I really just, like, if someone asks me something, I, I just, I, if I don't know, I genuinely tell you. I'll try to give you, like, my best educated guess. Yes. I could be completely wrong. But uh, I don't, I don't like, but then some people though, it's like, they're just trying to, I, I don't, if it makes them feel better or something, like, you know what I mean? I'm such a prick. I, this is what I used to do when I clap back at somebody. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but it's just funny. Cause like someone like that who comes in the DM or your comments and like, yo, you should throw the hook first or whatever. Yep. Right. And then I, I, I'd be like clicking their profile picture and like. <laughs> I like zoom in on their picture. It's always like the worst. Always, thing. Yeah. and I like respond with just their picture. Yeah, like, dude, come on. Yeah, but I stopped doing that because I was like, you know what, man, that person's probably so self awareness for me was like, yo, that person's probably like hurting. But like, you know as men, it's hard not to. Clap it's hard back. not like like builds our DNA, and that's what I wish. Like, uh, I don't know, because it's so easy. You see, like, uh, there'll be like a celebrity that like DMs someone. And they'll be like, hey, that tweet was effed up. And then it gets screenshotted and shared, 50,000 likes. Everybody's ripping them apart. And you're like, you guys are forgetting. Like, they, like this is a human on the other end of that. Yeah, she's got feelings and emotions I mean, and an ego I mean, or whatever. In life, regardless. Like, my life was that it's, like, you, from the outside looking in, my life my life might have looked perfect. But, like, I was, I was at some of my lowest. And mm -hmm. I'm on that YouTube camera with a smile on my face. And you'd never have known. No, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's like, you, you never have any idea what uh, someone's going through. I have a buddy... They just hit me up recently. He's actually been staying at my house this weekend, and um, he's you know going through a breakup. And um, yeah, I was just you know he's I I'm very busy. It's hard for me to put time aside to like entertain somebody if that makes sense. But like when it's someone close to me like that, and it's like uh, he needed to get out. I was like, dude, come here. I got you. Got a room. Stay. Last night I wanted to be in bed at midnight, but I stayed up till two a.m. talking to him because he needed it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I think stuff like that is. Uh, I'm a big believer in karma. Mm, karmic debt, man. It's huge. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, not being selfish. Mm. And I would say that uh, it's weird because I have helped. There's other shit I, I never talk about on my channel. Um, like I've helped so many people out with so many things. I've paid rent for people so many times. I never mentioned that. Um, but every time I've done that. My life levels. I always get it back yes. in this home. Yes. Every time. Because you're doing it from a place of abundance. Mm -hmm. It's not because you're not doing it from a place of self uh, serving, right? Where mm -hmm. you're like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm gonna, like, I'm going to fail. Nothing it. pisses me off. <laughs> right. Yeah. You nailed it. Like, yeah. I'm going to go feed the homeless with a camera in their face. Yeah. It's like, bro, like, mm -hmm. karmic debt's going to bite you in the ass for mm -hmm. that, right? You're going to get so much hate, so much flack. No one's going to, no one's going to respect that. But you do it in the shadows and the silence and you, almost anonymously in some cases, right? Where like, I, I like, I have a thing where I'll pay for someone's food behind me, right? Yeah. Like drive through. I love mm -hmm. doing it. It's random. Mm -hmm. I don't do it all the time. I, it comes to the thought in my head, do, do it. Did it the other day at McDonald's. <laughs> Shout out to McDonald's. Let's get a Diet Coke. And, uh, of course, <laughs> just a dollar 69 or whatever it is. And, uh, pay for the dude behind me. And they were like, that'll be 36 dollars I'm like, all right. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. my man's hungry back there. So I did it though. But it's like, it's just little things like that that yes, all the time, karmic debt will get you back. It, it may not be financially, it may not be the same way you did it, but it will get you back in a good way. Like almost 10 times more than what you did. Yeah, and I've had to learn, uh, I think you touched on it earlier, you said like um, material possessions aren't uh, everything. And there was a time when I thought that they were. Mm. There was a time when I said, if I buy this and I buy this and I buy this, that'll make me happy. And it was like the most miserable I ever was. Because mm -hmm. I had all that shit and I was just like laying in here alone, just like, I'm just miserable amongst all the shit. Yeah, it's like, because happiness, if you're looking at it from like a, a graph perspective, you buy something, your happiness meter goes up, but then poof, yeah. comes right back down, right? Because it's yeah. just a temporary thing because you get used to it. You're like, yeah. oh, the Lambo or the fucking, you know, you, you mentioned your bins or whatever. Like, it's a beautiful fucking whip, right? Like, all the, all those things are awesome. 
But like you drive it for a month and you're like, oh, it's normal. It just, uh, I was just talking about this with the, uh, I just got the new iPhone, um, but I had a 10 Pro Max before, so mm. I hadn't got a new iPhone in forever. Damn. So I just got the new one, it was a pretty big jump. It was time, my phone was really messing up. And it was like, yeah, the first like few days were dope. Yeah. And then now it's just my phone. It's just your phone. That's it. It's right. Gonna, it's going to be my phone probably for and another standard four or five years. The standard is here now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So now you're like, God forbid anything's not up to this. It's like, that's not cool. Yeah. Like your new, it's it's like uh, material, man, this is it. Material possessions establish a new baseline for a standard. Yes. So it sets you up for a massive drop in happiness. Yeah. Because God forbid... You lose your car. God forbid something burns. I down. did lose my car. Right. right. Yeah. You're right. So then all of a sudden you're like, "Fuck." Yeah. That was the new normal. Yep. And now it's gone. Yeah. And now, now what? Now the you first, gotta fill that. Door. The, I won't lie. The first uh, week after I got rid of it, um, and I got my new car. I was, uh, yeah, it was it, it was weird because I was like, "There's weird thing in my head." Like, am I not cool? It's cool now because I drive a Cadillac Escalade and not a G wagon. Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Those thoughts are normal. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all have them. We're just afraid to say it. Yeah. Right? Like, oh shit, like I'm rocking Louis Louis shoes and like, damn, if I rock like normal shit. Yeah. Like I'm probably not as respected, right? Yeah, if I don't have all my, my Travis Scott. <laughs> yeah, your Richard sick ass Travis Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like fucking three thousand dollar shoes for a fucking guy. Yeah, it's like, but if you if you if you then lower that, right? You you come back down to earth. I mean, the thing is, I think what, what really sucks though is and I'd love to hear what you think, but I feel like all this is mostly internal, right? Where it's like, people don't really see everything the way we see. Like, I, I, I saw your shoes when I walked in. I'm like, oh, those are fresh as shit, right? I knew yeah, exactly yeah. what they were. Yeah. Cool as hell. A lot of people I, don't. I know how much they cost. So I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Awesome fucking baller ass shoes. They're sick. But I don't, that doesn't impact me at all, right? I just think, cool. Yeah. But you, you might be like, yeah, I really love these. Using the shoes as an example, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. But it's like, it inside for you it does so much so when you lose that or you don't have it or whatever it's just a temporary high that you feel and then it's a fear that if I don't have those things at all times like your safety net now yeah it's like all of a sudden your armor is off right? well it's, it's I think uh, a lot of people wrap uh, a lot of things up in their identity mm. it's like we have this like carefully constructed identity and how we view ourselves and then we wrap ourselves up in it like a cloak so then, like maybe your shoes are part of your superhero costume, your cars, your Batmobile, right? Yeah, all yeah. this stuff. And um, that's one thing since getting sober and the whole God thing. And I'm just like, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I am just so content. Mm. Like I'm just, uh, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, um, if I, like honestly, like, like I was talking to my buddy about this. Uh, it's our 2 a.m. conversation. I was like, honestly, like um, I've just realized that it doesn't take much to make me like happy at all mm. like it really doesn't um if i'm able to just work i'm like like get me out of here put me in a one bedroom apartment um like you know I, <laughs> whatever i gotta do to just at least get my internet and i can like like set up my computer so i can like work on music you know like, yeah. just, like it's not like i've just i've just realized like like all the things i thought made me happy like mm. i don't know man it's i'm so i'm just so at peace this is the most at peace i've ever been in my entire life, which That's is crazy. Dude. It's it's. But I know what you mean because for me, it's like I like creating content. Like mm -hmm. I like writing. I like love writing. Right. I, I'm getting better at video, but I, if if all you told me was like what you said, like hey, dude, you're gonna wake up, you create content all day, help coach, you know, coach clients and stuff. I'm good. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, obviously, I want my kids. You know, I want my family to be good. Like I got responsibilities, but for me personally, I get the most fulfillment from that. Yeah, right. I don't need like I, I have nice stuff, right? And yeah, it's cool for like a minute, and then it's not that cool. Like seriously, it's just not. <laughs> like nice toys are cool, but they're toys. They are toys. You know what I mean? Like they're not. They're not going to talk back to you. They're not going to be there for you, right? They're just mm -hmm. there. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's nice to drive a G wagon around. <laughs> yeah. Until but, I, until I, it's not. <laughs> I, I, until you need to get brakes and just a brake job's eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, fuck. I got to question my life decisions. Yeah. Um, bro, we didn't even talk about Anabar because Anabar is literally, I know it's your biggest project right now. Yeah. Right? Besides music, it's the Well, biggest. I mean, Anabar's, Anabar's at the forefront for sure, but like, how do I put it? It's not like, it's not like it's a, like, like a, it's like a, a 1A, a 1B, a 1C, yeah. right? It's They're just all, all important. Th very important. But I put Anabar at the forefront because I think, uh, I don't want to say it has the most potential because I think, you know, I, I believe in everything I do, but um, I just think... Anabar, I have a business partner. Yeah. And um, like I 
I, I, w- I would not be able to sleep at night if I wasn't making it my number one priority because mm. I owe him that. Yeah. Right? Because he's putting everything he has into it. Sure. So, and I, I need to put everything I have into it. 100%. So, which Anabar is going uh, absolutely insane. Right so, now. let's take a step back just for a second because I, I want to respect your time, but I also want to I want to make sure the audience knows. I followed you on YouTube before you were even doing anabolic recipes, yeah. Yeah. right? So was was cooking something you were passionate about, or was it just like, hey, I'm good at this, people so, need it? Here, here's exactly how that went down. When I moved to, uh, when I moved, okay, so I lived in Ohio, I lived in the same, I'm from like Southern Ohio, so like border of West Virginia, like like hill country. Yeah, like, yeah. When I started YouTube, it was actually because I was trying to explain this to someone the other day. I was like, where I'm from, it's not like, uh, my friends, you could grow up in Houston. You could grow up in Sugarland, where, where we're at right here, like a little suburb of Houston. And um, there, if you wanted to do music, there's a music studio in every direction. You wanted to you wanted to box. There's a boxing gym in every direction. Like, all, you have access to all this stuff. Yeah. I didn't even get a Walmart in my hometown until I was in high school, <laughs> okay? There wasn't a, there was one gym to go to. We didn't have a Planet Fitness yeah. or a commercial gym. It was some guy that had a gym. And then I remember that gym got shut down. So you didn't have a gym. Then another guy starts one. It was just like, you know, a gym way out in the country that had nothing. It was just like, you didn't have options anything. were limited. Very, very, very limited. I remember when I started YouTube, it was like, I was such a joke in my city when I started it because like no one had seen anything like it. Why is he walking around with a camera? Why, Why did you start though? How, how'd you? Funny story about that. Um, so what ended up happening was I was on Instagram. So do you know who uh, Sean, Sean, I forget his last name, the Model Health Show, it's a podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. I stumbled across that podcast randomly oh, and man. it like changed the entire course of my life. Wow. Yeah. He's a good dude, by the way. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah, I, I've, uh, yeah. Like real good dude. Yeah, I've, um, it's been a minute since I've checked in, but like yeah. I always give him his props. I, I, I really, honestly, he's funny. I, I never really thought about it this deep, but uh, he sent me, I think, on this whole path. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. so you discovered him and he kind I of discovered him. inspired you? Yeah, I listened to some of his podcasts and just the stuff he was saying. No one around me talked like that. Yeah. No one was like, you can have whatever you want, like faith and belief and uh, just all that. And it just like, boom, inspired me. So um, I started like listening to every single episode. I even emailed him once and he emailed me back. Oh, yeah. 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 So he was like, yeah, great dude. Um, so anyways... Um, but yeah, he was. Uh, I follow. I checked up on him during like the pandemic. Yeah, he's very much in line with us. Dude. Love it. Yeah. Love it, dude. Good dude. Yeah, there's not. Many, there's not well, there, there's a lot of us, but not many that are willing to speak. Exactly. Especially um, on that front. Yeah. There we go. So, um, anyways, I uh, discovered him. So it kind of like unlocked something in my brain, and I was like, okay, like, you know, I can do anything I want. So I was on Instagram, and I ran into you know Joseph Rakich. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. So I followed him on Instagram and would just kind of like, you know, see him shirt off, great physique, great physique, great physique, him standing next to a Lambo. Yes. Like, how does he, what? So my brain didn't understand it. Abs, Lambo. So, so I looked and I, he was always talking about coaching, but I just didn't yeah. think anything of it. And I click and I see this whole thing and it's just like, I was like, wait a minute. So he got that through coaching, like Instagram. Okay. Like, I want to do that. So I started trying to, uh, like blow up on Instagram. That was my thing. I need, I need to blow up on Instagram. Started a little website. I remember I just got on Fiverr. I was broke. I got on Fiverr.com, paid someone to design me a cheap little landing page with some uh, PayPal, like yep. pay buttons. Um, and it was like, started online coaching. And then as I was like, kind of trying to make that work, I was like trying to like advertise on my local stuff and all that. I didn't really have a following. I told myself that um, to legitimize the way that I uh, like appeared to people, it'd be better if I had a YouTube channel too with some mm-hmm. videos because he had one. Yeah. No one watched his YouTube channel at the time, yeah. but he had videos up. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to do this too. Um, but what even got me into that was uh, I was small, uh, small town, people were working out and I get a text from a guy. He goes, hey, we're going to shoot a workout video at the gym. I was like, workout video? He's like, yeah, we got a camera guy, we got everything. I had never seen anything like this before. So I'm like, I'm there. So I show up. Guy's holding a DSLR camera. He's got it mounted to some like shoulder thing. He's shooting. And I remember just being so fascinated by it. Mm. Like what, I'd never seen anything like it. Like what is this? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, wow. <laughs> so I'm like, like so super fascinated. So we shoot the video. I'm so excited to see it. I'm like, yeah, we got a guy that's gonna edit it and everything. I'm like, cool. So then like a week goes by. I'm like, where's that video? Like, oh, the guy bailed on editing it. I'm like, send me the footage. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. So like, I had no idea what I was trying. Just downloaded like Windows Movie Maker, <laughs> tried like, put together this like, like, you know, goofy little video. But from that moment, I, like it just, my yeah. brain was just like, oh, oh, 
And that, that's what got me started. So I was like, I can make videos. So I called that same camera guy and I didn't come and we would film, I think we started like a video a week. Mm. You know, I was working full time and then, um, you know, and then eventually like, trying to coordinate with him got difficult. And then I was like, well, I guess I could buy my own in a tripod. And then I started doing that. And then like, it was like, you know, making kind of crappy videos. And then um, I remember uh, I bought a little uh, pocket Sony vlogger, Sony MK, like something Mark three or something. But it was like a little pocket vlogger camera, it was, like a thousand bucks. Mm. But I remember like, I was like, I forget who I saw use it, but I bought it. I remember like I could hold it, had a flip up screen. Yeah. It was good quality and it fit in my pocket. It's the best. And that's how I do like 180 videos, 180 days. So I just took that camera with me everywhere. Filmed everything you were doing. Yeah. yeah. And I would find stuff. Like vlogs and stuff. Yeah. Just, like, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Vlogs, you know, but then like also some meal preps, talking yeah, about diets. Yeah. Uh, tips. I, I would like build a, a meal plan and then like I remember I would, uh, other types of content to do, I would like have this like a webcam set up with OBS. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and I would like screen share and I would have like a Word document open. I would just go over a meal plan and just like, I've always been a pretty decent speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just, uh, just, you were clear with what you were, you were teaching. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I feel, I feel that <clears throat> I've always, cause I was in sales. Yeah. So like as shy as I was, maybe at one point I just, uh, I learned I learned so much because like my first job that I ever really had like so I had like I worked at KFC in high school and had some jobs like that but my first job as an adult was at Circle K gas station mm. and I worked behind the counter <laughs> and uh, I learned so much about life at that job oh I'm sure I didn't I, I didn't know what food stamps were mm. until that I didn't know like like between that job and then working at Sprint you learned about different types of people mm. you learned about the the father that pulls up in the suburban with five kids, he walks in, no questions asked, five iPhones, every kid gets an iPhone, doesn't matter what the bill is. And then you learned about people that came in that had terrible credit, that couldn't even pay a single penny out of pocket to try to get a phone. Mm -hmm. And you had to like work with them to see like what, like you just, and you just kinda, so I learned how to talk to every type of person. Damn. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I learned how to talk to that father, you know, and I learned also how to like relate to, and then too, on top of that, I was buying so many Percocets, I was hanging out in so many trap houses and shit. I just learned how to nap, right? Yeah. So I feel like that translated to YouTube. So then when it was time to like talk, I just, I don't know. You I had just, it. I had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So how, how did the anabolic uh, recipe start though? So uh, I moved down here in... I feel like we, I was on that and then we just veered off a while ago. We, we went down to the trap trap houses. Jesus. We went down to the trap houses. Yeah. A lot of those people that I was hanging out with back then are dead now, by the way. Really? Crazy. Like like, like dead dead because they all moved on to heroin. ODs and stuff? Well, yeah. They um, What ended up happening was... Uh, so back then there was... Uh, hopefully your audience wants to hear this. Yeah, of course not. Uh, back then... Uh, so where I'm from, there's a there's a documentary on Netflix. I forget the name of it. But it's um, they called it Heroin Highway. But there was a highway that ran all the way from... like I think it ran like all the way up to Michigan all the way down to Florida. And in Florida, they had this uh, weird law where you could go to these things called pain clinics. And you could go to one and just like tell them some BS and they'd give you a script for Percocet. Oh, wow. So like, but you could go one, you would hop. So these people would go, they'd hop to all these different it's ones, come back with like 200 pills, drive up that heroin highway and bring all those pills back into town. Well, they cracked all that down. So pills not only became extremely hard to get, they became extremely expensive and fakes were everywhere. Yeah. You would buy, you'd buy these things and they, they were just fake, they were presses. Um, so the only option for a lot of people was uh, heroin, like for the same high. Yeah. Right? Right. Kratom and all that wasn't around back then. So, uh, yeah. So a lot of them just ended up ODing. Oh, my God. Yeah. I got to watch that. That's crazy. I, I have seen that. All. I haven't seen it. I actually watched it, but I know what you're talking about. Um, that's crazy, man. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, so anabolic recipes. So, yes. Let's uh, one, let's pause and do it again okay. real quick just to make sure that we got... Because we, that's an hour, I think. We'll do another... How, how much time you got? All right. Everything's still recording. All right. Boom. All right. So... You got your you got your base YouTube. So uh, before we, I, I do want to get into the recipes. But when did you blow up on YouTube though? Was it? I actually have screenshots. The other day I was going back through uh, Facebook and um, was like trying to look at when I posted certain milestones. I want to say uh, at one point I knew. So this could be a little off, but it's going to be basically in the ballpark. I want to say I got my first thousand subscribers after ten months. Okay. And then I remember from a thousand to ten thousand was in like like the next couple months. But this was how many? This was back when? This was two thousand twenty. Um, so I started at the beginning of twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was like yeah, like seven years ago. Yes. Something like that. Six seven yes, years ago. Yes, it's been a minute. Okay. Okay. It's been a minute. 
So what made you transition from doing mostly fitness? I mean, still fitness content, but like to going all in on, because I feel like you were like, you were, you were, if not the first person I like, go all in on recipes, but one of the first. Like everybody started copying you after that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Like everybody. Yeah, they did. Like literally. Yeah, they did. <laughs> oh yeah. Like it yeah. was crazy. It's funny because like, uh, I got called out for like, quote unquote, stealing recipes, but like, God damn, the amount of people that have stolen mine is oh, insane. I'm sure. It's insane. Because after you started, because you were posting recipes like nonstop, then all of a sudden I saw everybody else start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because it became a lane. Yeah. Became, yeah, yeah. Because so. your, your videos were crushing. Yes. They wanted to crush too. Yes. So, um, so really the recipe thing kind of happened uh, like out of necessity because I moved down here at the end of 2019. And then, um, so I moved, actually, so the whole reason I'm even here is because uh, my business partner slash best friend's girlfriend is from here. Okay. okay. So she's from here and it just so happened that Alpha Elite was here yep. and Max and Christian, all these guys that we follow here. So it was almost like, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us. Sure. We originally were going to move to LA. Thank God we didn't. I was going to say. Thank God. God, was God for dude, you. I didn't know. I didn't know enough about the world at the time. It Oof. just sounded cool. Oof. Yeah, I, I didn't know yeah. enough. Thank God we did. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank God. So this became an option. Um, we came down here, visited once, loved it. Um, found me a, uh, you know, like we were originally looking like in the middle of Houston at like these high rises and stuff. And I was like, this is just too much. Yeah. Like a big building, you got to like go up elevator. I'm like, no. So we actually found a, you know, not far from your 1879th degree. It was like a brand new apartment complex came down and looked this is where I always say that like for some reason my life has always like really worked out in a weird way because like mm -hmm. we came down and like they had uh, an apartment available and I went and looked and it was like uh, you walked in loved my apartment had like vaulted ceilings that were yeah. super high sop floor corner room overlooking the pool no one had ever lived in it brand new like everything was brand new beautiful gorgeous and I was just like I could live here for the right like, like I, I, ne this. I never want to move okay <laughs> so I moved down and then uh you know, my business partner um, had some family stuff happen. He like moves back to Ohio like immediately. So now I'm down here. And I don't know anybody, mm. right? So I'm going to the gym. I'm like trying to make friends. Um, I met a few people, but like it gets hard to like make yeah, yeah. friends as an adult. Yes, especially especially friends because um, a lot of people do want to be my friend, mm. but I can get a vibe off people like. Uh, I, like some people want something from you. Yes. Very yes. rare that you meet someone that's like, you're like, okay, genuinely, like, you really care about me. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that was a little strange. Met some people I was trying to, like, hang out with or whatever. And then um, it was kind of maybe starting to develop some friendships. And then pandemic, lockdown, gyms closed, restaurants closed. And uh, I remember loving my apartment and then waking up one morning. I had this little ritual. I was like, at the time I was getting up at like 4 a.m., I would get up. I would walk down, walk across like the little pool area. They had like a water cooler that had purified water, like and there was a gym in there. Mm. Every morning I wake up, go fill my jug up. It was just like part of my routine. Drink my little energy drink. And then um, I went out and there was like chains all around the pool. Oh no. Couldn't even walk through. I go to walk in to try to get my thing. It's all locked. All of our amenities that I was paying for were like taken away. No way. Everything. Holy shit. Everything. I even asked them, like, can I take a couple of dumbbells up to my apartment, please? Yeah. Like, like no. So I'm paying all this money a month now, and like what to me was the perfect spot was now like a prison. Yeah, like Jesus Christ, like literally. Especially when you love your routine, like routine dude. Is so important. I was so, I was down there. I was like, shh, like banging on those doors when I, I was so mad. I'm sure. And uh, Jesus so Christ. so in the gym's closed, everything's closed. Yeah. So like I was, at the time, I was strictly like a vlogger. At that time, I'd really transitioned my channel to uh, vlogs. Like, I had a drone. I was real cinematic. Like, my videos would take, like, eight hours to edit. I really thought them out, really planned them. And I had just moved down here, so my content was really fresh. People were really interested because, like, my whole life had changed. Yeah. And then um, now I'm stuck inside. So I was kind of uh, left with a choice because I couldn't, I couldn't go do anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how do I vlog? So I was kind of, um, you know, at the time I was uh, – I just came off like a really crazy, probably my most successful cut I ever did. It was like the chicken, rice, and broccoli days, right? Mm. And what got me into cooking, so here's the thing. I didn't always really like to cook, but towards the end of that cut, I remember sitting there on my couch watching uh, YouTube cooking videos, like Sam the Cooking Guy. Yes, I love Sam. And they're, and they're making this, because like 
when you're cutting like that, and like I'd be sitting down with my grilled chicken and my sweet potato and my asparagus, like eating and thinking about all the food I was gonna eat as soon as this cut was over. Yes. So, so, I, so I was watching him make like pizzas and making his own dough and shit. So as soon as the cut was over, and it's middle of pandemic and lockdown and stuff, so it was like I had nothing else to do. I just started cooking for fun. Yeah. I remember I would uh. Like I woke up one morning and made like a stuffed crust pizza, like lasagna. I did all these recipes I found that he made, and then, but I wasn't gonna eat all of it. Yeah. So I remember I made it all and just took it down to the people that worked at the front oh, and gave man. it all to them to eat. Like, yeah. cause I was just having fun cooking. Yeah, he was enjoying it. Yeah. So then, um, and right around that time was when uh, Greg Doucette had uh, kind of just started popping off, and um, he was talking about like uh, you know anabolic French toast, and yes. cause like I still had it in my head at the time that like. Like, cause right now I like, for me, the only things I care about with my diet truly from like a macro standpoint or whatever is how many calories are I eating a day and how much protein do I eat? Yeah. It's, it's the, the most important things. Yeah. It's the only things I consider. Um, I really don't eat a lot of vegetables. I, I take greens every morning. I take a fiber supplement. I do all that in the morning, but you know, like there's really the only two things I care about. Mm. But back then I was still into that thing where like, uh, cause it just seemed like that's what everybody said. Like it did like, like it, you had to have like. The rice was an amazing carb source. The yeah. mom you use and you'll be lean. And then you have yeah, to have magical chicken. foods. Yes. And you have to have chicken breast. And then oatmeal, it's complex. And like all this. So like. <laughs> Big words. And then fucking Greg came out and he was just like, like, no, white bread's fine. Yeah. White yes. bread is fine. I remember that. It's just, it's really, at the end of the day, like, like, like calories kind of in protein, right? So then like, that kind of blew my mind at the time. So I started, uh, I did one video where I said eating Greg Doucette's diet for a day. And I just made a bunch of foods that he made and um, ate them all. And then uh, I remember he reshared it and I had a sh ton of views on that video, mm. like a ton. And my channel had been in a weird spot because like I just, there was nothing, I wasn't doing anything really. I was putting out content, but it was just like, Basic. dumb. Yeah. I was just in my apartment. Like, it it turned back into like five tips for fat loss that no one, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> no one cares. Yes. Yeah. So like uh, I did that video and then everybody watched it and then I was like, huh. And I saw that he had a cookbook for sale. And I was like, well, I've done some recipes in the past on the channel. And that's where I got like in trouble for quote unquote stealing recipes. Um, Cause I like the majority of them back then was, I remember going to the Arnold Classic. Um, I'm from Ohio. So the Arnold yeah. Classics in Columbus, we went every year. And I ran into Michael Corey, who was mm -hmm. an old OG fitness YouTuber. He always did recipes. And uh, at the time I was a really small channel. And like, did, I was still like not even, uh, I don't even know if I even had 10,000 subscribers yet. But I, um, had made one of his recipes, and I remember meeting him in person. I was like, "Hey, man, I made one of your recipes on my channel." He's like, "Hey, man, that's what they're there for, bud. That's what they're there for." Yeah. So like my mind around it was never. That's what I tried to Stealing. explain when it all kind of happened. Was like in my head, I never. I just I didn't frame it that way. Yeah, it, yeah, it's Ever. not stealing because I mean nothing's really like a recipe is hard unless you're like a, a chef and you put together like a very specific like French toast. Like, come on, man. Like that's not. <laughs> How can you steal a French toast recipe? Well, and, and I still remember uh, when I came out with my cookbook, um, so I went back through, um, I had made some new recipes and added to it, and then uh, I put out my cookbook, and I really didn't want Greg to be upset with me that I was doing it, so I sent him a copy to review, and I said, like, look, even your French toast recipe, I made sure mine was different yeah, like, yeah, than yours. Like, yeah. I, I dotted my eyes and crossed my T's, because like, at that point, yeah. I was really... I were really, so sensitive about this shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know Greg personally, but he seems like he's super sensitive to everything. Yeah. Um, he was actually really cool about that. Um, me and him have obviously had our beef. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Uh, we recently made up, though. That's so good. We're in a much better spot. We actually made up over uh, – we started talking, and uh, he was going through um, a split. Oh. And I was at the time, too. Oh, and we okay. like And we kind of, like, on that. And then uh, I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry for what I did. He's like, I'm sorry for what I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we've been cool. But um, anyways, put out my cookbook. And then um, when I put it out, I was like, my channel, because, like, leading up to the launch of the cookbook, after that Greg video, I was like, well, because I did that diet of his for a day, but I had been doing it for, like, maybe a week. Mm. And um, I was losing weight. I was leaning out, I was feeling good, and I was like really satisfied. And I remember, it's just like, in the same way, like, you know, I talk about now being like obsessed with music, right? I was like obsessed with this new, I felt like I unlocked a secret, like I had like yes. a cheat code. So I started just like trying to find ways. I remember I was like making, like I started like, uh, I used like Sam the Cooking Guy, like how to make his dough, except I just used less flour and, you know what I mean? And I'm like, yes. you know, fat-free cheese instead of regular, some very simple tweaks. And I remember like, 
like every night I was eating this like pizza that I made, like made dough for every, and I was like lean as hell. Yes, eat the foods you love. Yeah, and I was like, and it's like blew my mind. So I started posting, like I came out of that pizza, I, like just like, well, I knew I know how to make this, let me make a video. And then boom, like 100,000 views. And I was like, wow. And then I dropped my cookbook and I'm like, no one's gonna buy this thing, right? Like, cause you know, cause here was the thing. Greg was selling his for a hundred bucks. Yeah, I remember that. And in my head, I said, I can't sell mine for less because I don't want him to get mad at me thinking that I'm trying to undercut him. I can't. Oh, right. I can't. Right. Like, I can't. So I sold mine for the same thinking that, like, like who's going to buy this thing for a hundred bucks? Dude. <laughs> How Dude. many copies have you sold? Um, I've made, like, since I dropped it, I dropped it June of 20... Uh, yeah, like the, like the end of June, so like basically beginning of July of 2020. Yeah. Um, so like three years ago. 1300. Holy crap. I made like 1.3 mil off of it. Oh my God. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I bought a copy. And, See, and yeah. you update it all the I, time. I, I do. That's the best thing that you do. I do. And that was so smart. So to be honest about that though, that wasn't some clever business decision or something I had yeah. thinking it would help me sell anything. It was, uh, I felt guilty selling it in its current form because. Um, well, for one, I was putting out more recipes. I was creating recipes, and I was like, I have to be able to like add these to this. Yeah, I'm not gonna like try to sell a second cook, like you know, yeah, version two. Yeah, version and then three. two, I felt, almost felt guilty about charging so much money. So in my head, I was able to like justify it in my own brain. Yeah, because like here's one thing about uh, when I worked at Sprint as a salesman, I I couldn't lie to people. I couldn't like tell someone something was good and it wasn't. I'm just not a type of person. Yeah, I just can't. It doesn't feel good on my soul. So I was like. In order for me to pitch this cookbook and actually sell it, I had to like add more value to it. Because how many recipes are in now? Uh, we are up to three hundred and fifty-two pages. Yeah, I mean, and, it's and like, it started with seventy. Yeah, yeah. So for a hundred bucks, I don't know what you sell for now. Is it still, same, yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah, I never changed it. And you get every every new recipe added. I mean, it's not only like, I mean, for a lot of people, because I work with people who struggle with food, like that is worth way more than a hundred dollars. Right, to not have to think about what you're gonna make and stuff. And like, and like, you know, as much as obviously I do sell it, right? I don't ever like to come off like I'm uh, trying to like snake oil anybody, but I true like this thing lit like this diet literally changed my life. Yeah. Because I was in that phase of my, my addictive personality, my OCD also applies to food. Mm. Dude, dude, my binge eating has been so bad. I would tell you stories you might not even believe. Mm. Dude, of sitting, getting done with a cut and being shredded, and then my binging gets so bad that I am sitting on the couch. This is this might gross you out. I have empty Gatorade bottles next to me. I would eat, puke into the bottle and oh keep my eating. God. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Just cause, it, just the idea of food is obsessive. At the time I was sober, so food was my drug. Yeah. It, mm. was, it was insane. Mm. Like, like I had to get my ice cream in that night. Cause like I would do one cheat meal a week, right? So I would like uh, get to that cheat meal time and then I would just, I would just like, in my brain, it didn't matter what I ate on this one day, as long as I could, you know, like just yeah. whatever. Like you can't do enough damage in one day. So I would, like I had to have pizza. I had to have this. I had to have that. I had to have Ben and Jerry's. I had to have mm. a thing of Oreos and a bowl with milk. Eat it like cereal. I had to, uh, it, it got bad, dude. Got Holy bad. shit, the Gatorade bottle is intense. It's, 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 yeah, it's crazy. That's the other thing too, is where I'm at in life right now. I don't mind, like, I might not have said this like six months ago. Yeah. But I'm just so like. No, I mean, people need to hear that. You know yeah, I mean? it's bad. I've definitely binged and purged before. I haven't mm -hmm. done the Gatorade bottle, but I've puked into a toilet because I'm like, oh, I ate a whole large pizza, 15 wings, ice cream, yep. more ice cream, whatever else I can get down. And then it's like, fuck, I feel so shitty. Here, so let me puke it up. Here's something that other people might not realize either is if you do it enough, you become good at it. Yeah. You're puking. I, yeah. I, I, on a dime. I can just sit there with a Gatorade bottle. Oh. I, don't, I don't even have to do anything. Just Wow. Yeah, launch. Holy shit. Yeah, got bad. But yeah. like, uh, I haven't, uh, and it was crazy because my binge eating was terrible. And then like, uh, I met my girlfriend and it just went away hmm. out of nowhere. Hmm. So it's so, it's so weird. the yeah. way that my, like, uh, my, uh, like my brain and my addictions and all that stuff like go, it's so strange. There's certain things that obviously do something for you. So the girlfriend, it, do, it does something for you that alleviates that fixation of food well binging. it was uh all i did was work um and that's I, a lot of stuff slowed down when, mm. when, I, when i met her um but it was like all i did was work so it was like i mean there was a time i was five videos a week i was doing that was before i had an editor mm. so i was five like 
And then if I was like, I remember going on, uh, going back home for Christmas and I didn't want to miss, I wanted to be able to go back and actually like see my family and like not have to stress. So I, what was it, like four weeks in a row, I did like every single video. Like I just like cranked them and scheduled them. That way I, I knew like from the Christmas flight until like the day after New Year's, I didn't have to work. Like Damn. technically on videos. Yeah. You know? So. Wow. Yeah. But I just think um when I met her, cause you gotta think I, at the point I had, I wasn't doing anything like, um, like the major, like what I would do was maybe go out to dinner with some friends on like a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, um, and that was kind of rare. I spent so many nights. I mean, because a lot of this stuff kind of happened too during the, uh, the pandemic was still kind of happening. Yeah. The stuff was still kind of weird. So I was just like, um, I mean, you know, what do you do? You order Domino's, you sit, you find a movie to watch. Right. You hope it's good. I was in the same like terrible cycle. But it was just like my yeah. Saturday, I lived for that Saturday. Mm. And it was... It was like it was like your uh, your your social health was food basically like that. essentially yeah yeah essentially so the girl and then maybe friends the girl I, I the girl was a lot of things I think the girl was um the girl was how do I put this um I had ach- at that point I had achieved a lot but I didn't have anybody to share it with nor did I have any I never had anybody make me feel like a superhero mm. right yeah like someone comes. And like, just the way that you live your life is compl- is like just so mind blowing. The stuff you have is mind blowing. Who you are as a man is mind blowing. The 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 someone that's like, wow, like the fact that uh, you're not just a bum and you actually like work, or the fact that you own uh, admiration, yeah, or like you own Anabar, like all, yeah. like, and it was like, it was weird. It was something I needed in my life at the time, but like, someone that made me feel like the man, yeah. Bro, I was just having this conversation yesterday. So weird. Literally this exact, like the words you just said came out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, and a partner, you know, your spouse, your girl, whatever, you, you need admiration between each other. You right? do. You, you have to. It's not, it's, and it's different than respect. Respect is like, hey, I'm going to hold the door before I'm going to treat you right. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to talk down to you. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. But there's, that's different than admiration. Admiration is looking at someone and being like, God damn, like you're stud. Like yeah. for real. Like you, you hear your, their story and you go, fuck man, you're strong as shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're working out like, damn, like you're a mm-hmm. beast, right? Because if there's not admiration, if it's just respect, I don't know. I don't know if that's enough. I feel like, I feel like you do need that admiration. It's a different level. It's like uh, the love languages, right? So like everyone's got their own little hot buttons. For me, I think for a lot of men, it's words of affirmation, right? Or it sure is for me. Yeah. Or a girl's like, like Dude, you're a fucking beast. That's like, that is awesome. uh, that is all like all I really need. I don't need you to give me a gift. I don't yeah, need no to gifts. Me. Yeah, nothing. What's the other one? Physical touch. You yeah. know, all men are sexual, but like words matter for men. Right? Yeah, something about a word from a woman that's admir like an admiration, and it, and it goes both ways too, though. Oh hell yeah, but hell yeah. Those those words with the barbs on the end of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Dude, dude, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The words that come in hot. That's how I was listening to something the other day, and it was like, uh, when a man is broken, he, I'm going to butcher this. When a man is broken, he damages things physically. When a woman is broken, she damages things verbally. Oof. Yeah. 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 That's a big one, dude. Yeah. That's truth. It really All is. Facts. No printer. Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Dude, all right. So we're uh, we're, we're coming to the end, but I, I wanted to so so Anna Bar, which I'm just gonna say it's not a pl- I'm not plugging for you, but it is the best protein bar. Thank I've you. had them all. I've had them all a hundred times. Cookie, white chocolate cookies and cream. <laughs> Godsend, bro. Like, yeah, they're amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, I mean, all the flavors are good. Don't get me wrong. That's my favorite. Uh, I also like the new uh, the strawberry. Strawberry is my favorite. Of yeah, it's really good. I actually had it for the first time in Austin. I was in Austin about a month ago, and I went to H E B. Uh, you guys are actually out at us at Trader Joe's. You guys have Anna Bars and Trader Joe's. We Joe's. did. You did. We Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. No. Okay, so I, I guess I haven't been in recently. We're, we're able. We are able to. Uh, Trader Joe's was our first like um, big retail location we went to. Okay. We didn't know enough about the business, mm. and um, we. Uh, it's hard sometimes to when you don't know. This is where like it's been really beneficial for us to find. So like right now we work with a guy, um, Arturo, that is incredible. He worked with Quest on when they were building. Mm. And he loved our bar so much he reached out to us like, hey, I think you guys got something here. So we work with him. He's, in, he's incredible. But um, 
it's why it's it's also like they always say like you should find someone doing what you do on a bigger level and like get advice from them. Essentially, that's what he was. But at the time, we didn't know any better. We got really lowballed, and it really wasn't uh, worth it. You try to you know, hey, can we da da da? Some mm-hmm. people won't budge, and then you get to a point where now you have all these other stores, and you go. I mean, we can pick and choose now. Nice. You know, but if I ask you, uh, I know people. Want, I, I want to know personally. Yeah. But how, what did it take to build Anabar? Like, what, what was it from a, a financial standpoint? Like, what what was the process like? Because you obviously have a following, right? Yes. Like a big following, loyal following. You're putting out recipes, and a protein bar is a perfect fit for it's food, an anabolic food diet or whatever. Of course, you know, yeah. Your your amazing recipes combined with a snack as a protein bar, perfect, right? Yes. Something you would. And you clearly do use every day. Oh, dude, I I, I travel with them everywhere I go. Like backpack, Anabar is part of hell yeah everywhere, right? Because they're they're convenient. They don't melt, by the way, that easily. Sometimes a little bit, but not as bad as I won't say the other. Just day. just wait until you live in a hundred degree Houston heat, <laughs> and, and you order off the website and they get shipped to your house, and, and they, they sit, sit out, out there, there for eight hours. Well, I put mine as soon as they come in. I put mine in the fridge. Look for like at you. Couple hours. We wish every customer was like. Well, yeah, because there's it's, it's butter, right? Peanut butter. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and chocolate coated yeah, in chocolate. So it's exactly, like, that's that chocolate will melt. Use your brain, people. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, you, so, so what did it take though? Like, what, what was what was your what was your startup? All that kind of stuff. So originally we had a uh, Final Boss Performance, which was our supplement company. Yep. Okay. So was we that were, a white label, or did you guys? Sorry to interrupt you. Was it white label, or did you guys just do like your own line and get manufactured, all that kind of stuff? When you uh, remind me. So white label would be like, hey, I got the products. I'm just gonna slap your label on it. No, no. So Ank, okay. Ank my business partner, um, owned. So when we met, actually, funny story. Um, at the beginning of my YouTube channel, um, I had just started it, and just when I was starting it, he was opening a supplement shop in town, and mm-hmm. he was like the big dog. And uh, so I moved to, so I'm from a small, small town. Moved to the next small town, mm-hmm. but like it's a little bigger. Um, they actually had a mall, which was really cool. Uh, <laughs> they had a Target. Yeah, they, they, had, they had a Taco Bell. That was cool. Uh, yeah, they had a Target. They had a fucking yes. Target. That's what you know. Yeah, that's what you I know. I grew up in a small town, too. I know. Walmart was like a new thing. Yeah. So uh, so when I moved into South Start, my YouTube channel, I had approached him because he was like a big shot in town, real popular. He was he owned a lawn care company. He was getting to start a something mm. shop, Subzilla. And I remember, I knew I was starting to fitness YouTube. I remember he was having his grand opening, and I reached out and said, hey, I will show up. I don't want money. I want nothing. I will show up. I'll film it for you. We'll make a video, whatever. And basically, uh, you know, I helped him. And then in turn, like, it, you know, he let me like go and like my favorite supplements. I go film and it like validated me mm. in a lot of ways. And um, boom, fast forward all these years, and he's my best friend and business partner. Amazing. So um, we owned us the supplement company. We launched that I believe in 2018. I think it's like maybe yeah, 2018, early 2018. Um, and we had like greens, we had branched chain amino acids, we had protein powders, and I want to say that our our best our best year that we had had. So we launched Anabar in twenty twenty one. So our best year in twenty twenty, I think we did oh like overall revenue was like I think like two like two hundred and thirty two hundred forty thousand. Okay, okay, just for subs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So like it was okay. Like it was making some money, but it yeah, wasn't. it was profitable. But not yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were making some money, and then we were able to reinvest. Like we didn't pay ourselves anything. Okay, you're just, like, it's like, just cash yeah. flow. It's up until very recently that I actually start making money off of Anabar. Mm. Very recent. Yeah, um, that's how it goes. Yeah. It's, makes sense. Yeah, so it was like, um, so we had like, you know, money that was like building and that's like, because we launched just with uh, branch, branch and Aminos and one pre-workout flavor and then we like, you know, able to get a second one up and then, you know, we just kept reinvesting it. Mm. Um, we launched an apparel line off of it that failed miserably. Um, apparel is ridiculous, by the way. Don't it's get into so it. so hard, dude. It's, it's, so ridi- it's ridiculous, dude. We, we were screwed from the moment we ordered our stuff and it came in from overseas, okay? Yeah. Um, and they were telling me on the phone over there, hey, like someone will call you when it gets here. You're just going to pick it up. You might need a U-Haul or something. All right, cool. Month goes by. It's supposed to be here in two weeks. I'm like, huh? Like, I haven't you know heard yeah. anything yet. So I decided to call over there. It had been there for like two weeks. We were, the it, somewhere. And we were getting charged. Like, it ended up being like almost... Trying to remember the exact, it's been so long ago. Whatever it was, it was like almost ten thousand dollars to get it, to pay to get it. Jesus. Like so, we like already from the moment we had it, we had already lost like water. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was apparel's a joke. You got to have your own main. Fa- it's yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's brutal. I've looked at it; it's terrible. It's hard. I, I respect people to do it because it's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. And yeah. then none of the samples ever fit, and nah. then everything's terrible. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> I keep veering off. No, no, nah, nah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. So, um. With Anabar, we had uh, kind of slowly expanding our line. Like it was something that uh, I was pitching in my videos. 
um, you know, we were doing decent, but like, you know, it wasn't uh, obvious. Like, 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 we were still like building it. And then um, we got reached out to by a, when Ank owned his supplement shop, they carried a protein bar in there and it was uh, always really, really, really good. Like yeah. we really liked it, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a protein bar. It was like a health bar. Mm. And it was like a peanut butter bar. They were super good, but they were really high in fat. Um, didn't have a ton of protein, maybe like yeah. eight or ten grams. It's like energy bar. Yeah, like. it was like like something that uh, I think this bar, this bar uh, ended up failing. But they would get it into um, like some coffee shops and things like that. Yeah. It was one of those yeah. things. And like the marketing was all about like a healthier whatever. So they went out of business, or that that brand failed. But the guys that made it had always made it in house. They like mm-hmm. developed their own manufacturing. So. Ank was good friends with them from those days. One of those guys reached out to him and was like, hey, like, we're now making bars for other people. We're using our same, you know, methods and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, um, essentially, they reached out, like, you guys want to, want to try a bar? We're like, sure, but, like, we know what the old bar was. So, how about this? Can we, like, we like the idea of that, but, like, we need more protein. Yep. You know, we need to be a little more fun. Not really even sure what we were getting into. Yeah. They sent us our first round of samples, and they were just incredible. Because <laughs> you got to think, the majority of people that are getting protein bars manufactured, like there's like one bar. Um, not, I'm sorry, not not one bar. Uh, there's a U bar. It's a yeah. massive manufacturer out in Cali, maybe. Yeah. Um, and they do like a ton, like a huge bulk of bar. There's like a mm-hmm. few, like same thing with protein powders. You're going to the store and you're seeing the um, same protein powders are like all made at the same place. Yes. Right. Yes. Just white label, like you said. Exactly. Just, just re. Uh, yeah, so we had something completely unique. And then um, and I still remember, I always tell this story, but it's like uh, when I first started dieting, um, I, I, the first time I'd ever really gotten abs in my life, I just discovered fitness, discovered that if I could follow meal plan and track macros, I could be lean and like have abs. As a big, as an out of shape video game kid, like it was like insane for me. Yes. Um, so I remember I went on a family vacation and I was like in the middle of this diet and I brought a bunch of Quest bars with me. We were on the beach one time. My sister and uh, mom were hungry. They were like, can we try one of those bars? I gave them each one. They took one bite. And I was pissed because they were expensive to me at the yes. time. That was a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. They took one bite and threw them away. <laughs> I and then, say some shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and then when we had these samples, um, my, they had came down to visit me and I had the samples, let them try them. And the next day, they're like, do you have any more of those? Yes. They liked them. So I knew we had something. And then um, we were basically able to launch it. We, we launched with, uh, we had three flavors at launch. We had 2,000 boxes of each flavor, so 6,000. Um, we just used, you know, all the money built up we had in our account to launch. And then, um, I don't know, I was kind of previewing it on my channel, but here's the thing though, even when my channel was like really going during that time, yeah. I still wasn't looking at views or really? anything like that. I, I had no idea really how good I was doing, mm. um, or how well this would do. And then, um, I remember we launched and it was like, all right, launch day, like exciting, da, da, da. like we launched and I remember we sold out. Bro, it was like, fast. It was That's insane. Awesome. It was insane. Yeah, because I was on that. I was on your recipes at that time. Like, I yeah, was like, I, you know, I'm not a. I know what I'm doing. I, I've been on flexible dieting for fucking forever. But it was like, I don't know, something about the recipes you were putting out. I was like, man, that, these are like really fucking good. First yeah. of all, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like they're not. And they're not complicated. Yeah, no, that's no. the worst. Yeah, of course. Like, oh, you can eat whatever you want. All this is 80 different, re- you know, ingredients. And yeah. Like, okay, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, and it was uh, like, and it was. I guess I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize the. Um, the the I, I I didn't realize the amount of people that really like were messing with me like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. So as soon as you released in bar, it's like Phew. it went away, and then um, we started getting reviews, and I was like, I know people have to love this as much as I do. Yeah, like they have to, and then like just everything was stellar, and then um, we ordered our next round of stuff, and then um, they the, sold out. The first one was uh, the cinnamon. Was it, the- it was cinnamon. It was PB and J, and it was yes. cookies and cream. But the cookies and cream at the time was the only one that was covered. Yeah, with white chocolate, right? Yeah, chocolate. yeah, that was. Yeah. They were all three bomb. I think the first one I ever tried was the cinnamon, the, cra- the, the cinnamon, cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was really yeah. Because I mean, if we're all being honest, protein bars they taste like shit, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part, like most of them, I don't, the ones that taste good aren't really protein bars. They're like Snickers. Exactly. You know what I'm saying they're Snickers, and you know, it's like you can't really justify eating a Snickers as a healthy snack. So it's like you, you do the protein bar, but it's like. I'm eating this bullshit, right? It's like it doesn't. It's not enjoyable. I was on a mar- I was on a call the other day with a distributor that's going to pick us up. Um, that uh, they like do all the Circle Ks and a ton of gas stations, massive. Mm. So I was on there and I was explaining. We were talking to him, and it was uh, the way I described it was like if you're into fitness, like it's kind of like um, everybody knows that coffee doesn't taste good. Yes, black coffee, but you acquire a taste for it. 
same thing with a protein bar. You acquire the the protein. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. So if you're not expecting it, and yeah. you just want a beverage or a bar, you're just like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, you choke it down the first few times. Yeah. You're like, all right, it's like taking a shot. You're like, there we go. It sucks, but like, there we, it's like you're, you have the end goal in mind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, where <it's> like <laughs> driving home on a rim. That's yeah. The, that's the yeah. End goal. yeah. There we go. <laughs> so down the hatchet goes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, but that's true. The, the acquired taste is so fucking. That's perfect. Because you're like. <laughs> To the average person who doesn't do this shit, they're like, why are you eating this bullshit? It's like, I don't know. I guess I have an acquired taste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in a bar, you don't have to have an acquired taste because it fucking tastes good, man. Yes. People are like, it's not healthy. It's like, yeah, it's, and, the macros are actually fucking legit. And then it was uh, after that, and it just kind of started spiraling. Because um, what happened at the time was we had a, uh, with our settlement company, so we had our uh, manufacturer was based out in, was it San Diego? I think it was, yeah, San mm-hmm. Diego. Our manufacturer was out there, but also a fulfillment center. So it was really cool because like, you know, we were here, like they would sell and then also ship it for us. Mm. Really cool. Really cool. Right. But when we launched Anabar, we shipped all of our bars to them to fulfill. They had never dealt with volume like that ever. Mm. Remember it took like a month to get like all the orders out for them. Yeah. And when we're like offering an incentives, like if you have guys stay and work all night or you pay an extra guy, like, like a thousand extra dollars. Pay more. Yeah. Like, like, like we need these out. And, um, it got to a point where they were basically like, we can't do this for you guys anymore. Mm. So uh, we um, we were like, okay, do we find another performance center? And then we go, well, I think if we're going to keep growing like this, we're going to have to bet on ourselves. Let's get a warehouse. Mm. So we have a warehouse down the street now that we're actually moving out of. Uh, like It's either next week or the week after. And it's too big. Dude, it's just um, the amount of product we have to store yes, is getting great. insane. That's good. Yeah. That's good problems. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, it's been... Um, yeah, but I mean, between the warehouse and then, um, yeah, it's just the thing about it though is like I've always said this: you can have the best product in the world, but if no one knows it exists, then it's going to be dead in the water. Mm. With us, we have the product, we have the name. The name is perfect. Yes, it, it is. rolls off the tongue. Yep, it yep. does. Yeah, um, yep. and it fit right into what I was doing. And then um, our branding's incredible. Yeah, I love our branding. I think our marketing is incredible. Our social media is incredible. Like every step of the way, we've really paid attention to detail with this. Yeah, but like. Maybe we wouldn't have had we not learned from, uh, I mean, our first seller company, Final Boss Performance, had like this. I was just too aggressive. Mm. Like, we needed something that had massive, like, like I thought of you. Yeah, like, like, we're coming up with a name. The name almost has, like, like, normally, it has, like, a male and a female connotation to it. Like, Anna Bar, like, sounds feminine in a way, the way it rolls off the tongue. But then, like, for a man, an- Anna Bar. Anna Bar. <laughs> you know, like, Anna Bar. Like, like, Anna Bar, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the animal. Bar. My uh, buddy's about to walk in. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Let me do that real quick. Is yeah, this good? Yeah, we're almost done anyway. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Make sure that's lighting still good. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I will say, you know, because we have, uh, we have uh, mostly, so I'd say we're about 80% men in our clients, our clientele, uh, 80% male demographic, 20% female. But, bro, we had a live event last year, excuse me, earlier this year in March um, and we gave out boxes and boxes of Anabars like it was just like part of their gift bags and stuff so, yeah and dude when I say like it was like crack fiends they were like you got any more those Anabars hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah the next day you know because everybody gets their bag the first day they go back they snack on them or whatever people come up to me like hey man you got, you got any more of those Anabars I'm like bro I got a shit done you ain't getting none <laughs> <laughs> I'm like those are those are this is my house stash yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been crazy because like, um, you know, with, uh, with Annabelle, like with the marketing and stuff like that, obviously we have like my channel and, um, I, you know, there's a plug in every single video, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm putting out a ton of content. Good um, plugs though. They, they fit right in. <laughs> I, 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 I do my best. Yeah. They don't, they, it doesn't seem like a plug. It's not like an ad. Like, hey, by the way, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's a little different too when it's, uh, like I don't really, uh, the only company I work with besides me like my stuff is uh young la their clothing right yeah right. which um yeah they're they're great and i don't even i try not to make that too much. i'm just like hey if you ever like what i'm wearing yeah, it's just casual normal feel, you know it feels like you're just saying this is what i do so yeah if you want to do it precisely, do it. precisely. <laughs> so like uh, and i've always hated that like overly salesy overly uh overly produced overly now, i was just wondering do people actually like watch that kind of shit and go yeah, I should fucking get one of those. Yeah. Or, or do they go like they fast forward, dude? They uh, <laughs> we just uh, we just sent out a um, okay. So we just had our uh, we just launched a Gen Z. 
Yes. And, uh, we launched a Congrats, by the way. It's fucking Thank awesome. you. Thank you. And we if nothing else, that's like a childhood, like, dude, you know, bodybuilding fucking dream, right? Dude, I, like, dude before, the shit. before I ever even started my uh, YouTube channel, when I first was like, uh, I don't even think I had my Instagram really yet. I was um, really trying to business it or whatever. Um, I remember, like, I told myself I wanted to start a supplement company. And I remember I'd have, I would always keep all my empty uh, supplement containers on top of my fridge mm-hmm. is like a... I don't even know like trophies. trophies yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I remember going up and taking them all up to my office and being like, I'm going to like having no idea where to start. Like, okay, I'm like looking at the back, like what's this manufacturer? Like Googling it, seeing them, and they're like, all right, your first order needs to be like five thousand, and just being like, I, right, uh, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah. like mind blown. But that was my like honestly, it's crazy because that was my, my first dream was to like have a sub. You know, I'm, lo- I'm looking at C4 containers, looking at Extend BCAs, and I'm like. Mm. Yeah, now it's like, um, I mean, it's a protein bar, but it's like, yeah, to be in G- It's weird because I say this a lot. It doesn't um, doesn't feel real sometimes, mm. if that mm. makes sense. It's no, like, I know exactly what it means. Right. Yeah, because I, I, uh, I remember, you remember Muscle Tech, of course, right? Cell Tech, all yep. that shit. So one time I entered the, uh, this is when I lost all my weight. I entered the, uh, they did like a competition, right? It was like, uh, send us your before pictures, tell us your goals. And if you're one of the guys we pick, we'll fly you up to Toronto and give you the free supplements. Okay, so I, I won. Okay, so, hell yeah. So I was fat, right? Yeah. Like 75 pounds away. I go up there, I take pictures, fat as hell. And for every month, for a year after that, they sent me, when I say boxes of supplements, bro, like I was getting so much shit, I couldn't even give it away. <laughs> right? It was crazy. Yeah, like yeah, muscle yeah. tanks just box after box because they wanted me to use the product, get in shape, and then they flew me back up when I got shredded. And they took my after picture. Okay, so then what happens is they have all these people do these before and after. This is smart back then. It's expert marketing. They take your pictures and they say, oh, he took cell tech. Right? Yeah. So I won. And my picture was in all the like flex magazines and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, that was like mind blowing to me. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I used to fucking of course. read those magazines. And it was like it was like better than porno mags. I was yeah. just, you know, yeah. on the toilet reading them nonstop. Yeah. So I know exactly what you feel because it's like you're like damn like I looked at that like GNC was like the pinnacle for supplements you know as kids especially and you're like now I have a product in there that people actually want and use like it's just fuck it's crazy like I know exactly what you mean it doesn't feel it's like you're you're almost like an out of body experience you're like is this really happening can I touch this I I, I relate it to when I started YouTube I wanted nothing more than uh, ten thousand subscribers then I got it and then all I wanted was a hundred thousand. Right, and you tell yourself like, when I get there, just imagine. Yeah, and then you get there, just imagine. and you're like, you know, like like if Anabar gets into GNC, just imagine. Yes, and then I'm like, I mean, what's changed? And it's like you make a million bucks. Like if, as soon as I make a million bucks, just yeah. imagine. You just and imagine. Like, well, well, now it's ten million. And now yeah. it's hundred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, so it's like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, not that it's like a bad thing. I mean, it's obviously dope, but it's like, uh, it's awesome. yeah, but it's like, uh, I don't. I'm gl- I'm glad I'm where I'm at in life now because I probably would have used it as an excuse to go drink and just you know what I mean because I was like I don't know it's what's weird but the only times I ever really celebrate celebrated any of my wins or I would like really appreciate maybe what I've done is when I'd be drinking mm. which was like which was yeah I don't, maybe that's why I leaned so hard into it because I remember like I'd get a few drinks and I'd be sitting there like wow this is crazy yeah look at all this mm. wow. Amazing, and, yeah. but but like I'm much, I'm so much more uh, grounded now, and I just um, I, I prefer this. Yeah, oh for sure, because yeah, I think uh, I don't know, man. The timing is is so crazy, right? It's like you you get what you're. It's almost like it, you kind of look at it like from two different angles. It's like is life like a plan that I'm on already? Like I'm just kind of following it, right? And I hope mm-hmm. I don't fuck it up along the way. You know, or is it like I'm deciding my own fate? I'm making the right. I don't know. I kind of flip back and forth, right? But ultimately, you kind of look at it and like, hey, I'm 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 whole inside because of my beliefs, my faith, or whatever you have. Yes. And whatever happens, happens. I'm just gonna do good. You know what I mean? I'm just mm-hmm. do good in the world. I'm gonna fucking crush it. Whatever happens, happens. It's like that's like what I consider grounded. Of like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna work no matter what. Like, I'm just gonna yeah. get after it no matter what. Whether I'm the best, worst, I'm gonna keep crushing it. Let, let the chips fall where they may. Instead of being like so fixated, like oh, when I get the million, when I get this, 
And then you get there, you're like, fuck, that wasn't that great. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, I mean like, yeah. You're at the top of the mountain, and you're like, well, shit, there's 18 other mountains I gotta fucking climb. You know, like, that's a different take instead of just enjoying the fucking view, man. Well, you know what I found? I found that, um, like, what gives me more happiness or maybe more fulfillment or what places it or whatever is, like, um, is being able to use it to give back to the people mm. that, I, that I really care about. Like, uh, my brother... For instance, um, growing up, he, uh, what you would call it, my mom, um, my mom really sheltered him in a lot of ways, right? Um, like, he was like the baby, whereas mm -hmm. I was like the oldest, I was like the, you, like, you're not allowed to work for the family, you gotta go, you gotta go off and like do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Like, when I failed out of college and dropped out and everything went crazy, like, I wasn't allowed to go back home and like try to like okay maybe I'll give you a job like my mom owns a trash company it's mm. so like maybe I'll give you a job like yeah I don't know right you have to go work at a gas station okay whereas mm. my brother graduates and he gets to go work for mom like right away mm. but but um we talked about earlier like you don't have any challenge you don't have like right you're mm. whatever it's not good for you so eventually it kind of turned into um he was super depressed so my mom you know my mom is an angel my mom is the best woman in my life. Um, she is incredible. And uh, so sometimes you think you're helping somebody, mm. but you're hurting them, mm. right? So, you know, he's, he's like unhappy with his, uh, you know, he's like, I don't like working here, all this stuff. She's like, well, here, like, we'll help you save money. We'll get you like an Airbnb in town. Then you don't have to work. You're just like, take care of the Airbnb. Mm. But what did that lead to? A lot of weed smoking, a lot of sitting around, a lot of your schedule, like, you know, like the next thing you know, he's like unwrapping, like beard down to like, just mm. like suicidal thoughts. The worst anxiety ever like um he he came I, was try, I kept trying to get him to come down here and visit and uh he like eventually had to like get a buddy to fly with him and then uh he walked out of his house to leave and threw up in his yard he was so nervous yeah like just you know yeah. came, came down here um had a really good time because you know it's usually like, like that fear you have like once you face it you're like oh that ain't shit yeah yeah it's, the fear is greater than the actual thing itself yeah like the first time i had sushi <laughs> 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 it's just gonna fuck me up, man. Yeah, you know, that's not that bad. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, with him, uh, you know, he came down and visited, and then um, he kind of brought up the idea of like maybe moving down here. And then, uh, long story short, he now runs our warehouse. Wow. Completely Looking turned awesome. everything around. He's killing it. Damn. And like, um, he like literally has a new lease on life. Like literally, he's like a different person. That's incredible. Completely. So like, there's that. Or um, my buddy Ant gets back today. He just uh, rented a house in Florida, um, a crazy beach house, and had his, his mom's side of the family. His parents aren't together anymore, but his mom's side, his sisters, his dads, all of them come and stay in this house. Like, none of them had to pay anything. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, or it's like, you know, just stuff like that. Yes. Or like, when I do go back home, like, when I do go back home, they're very short trips, but they're like me zigzagging around to see family. And like, you know, I had my uh, brothers, uh, my stepbrothers, uh, children uh, have their birthdays and I'm like I'm, I'm, gifts so like I'm down and I'm like, like like I'm here like that's the stuff that really really um, the fact that I can give to people is like is like the best thing mm. like the best thing so it's like I think about because um, obviously with Anabar like the goal is to be the largest protein company in the world sure right and with that it's going to come a lot of money right but like I think about that and I'm like you know because eventually, uh, I think the end goal is an acquisition, mm -hmm. right? So um, you look at the valuations of some of these companies that have sold recently. I think uh, I get the names mixed up sometimes, but maybe it was RX Bar was it? Wow, some bar sold for yeah. like three hundred million, right? So if that happens, crazy to think about. I split that, pay taxes, whatever. Like I'm, I'm retiring my dad, and he'll be a millionaire. My brother will be a millionaire. Mm. Like my stepbrother and his family will be a millionaire. Like I. That's how I'm thinking. Like when this yeah. happens, like yeah. like like there's people that are, because like what whether I bring home seventy million or fifty million, doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah. Like like, but I can boom 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 change all these people's lives. Like that is what drives me. Oh yeah, completely. Yes. Yeah, and and the fulfillment you get from that, I mean, there, there's probably nothing better. I would say there's probably nothing better. I, I can't think of anything better. Me neither. You know what I mean? Like changing people's lives in that kind of way. Yeah, nothing better. Me neither. Yeah, it's it, it doesn't it doesn't get any better than that. That's that's when you know you, yeah, you're you're not driven by temporary things anymore. You're 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 driven by um, I don't know legacy. Legacy is the right word. It's not a legacy. Hmm. It's probably um, 
Hmm. I'm not even sure what I would yeah. call it. Legacy, it's not legacy. It's, it's like, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just being a godly person. <laughs> you know Perhaps. what I mean? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. Because I feel like I've spent, you know, portions of my life, like, maybe not being so godly. Maybe being mm-hmm. a little selfish. Maybe being a little envious. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't, I mean, between literally making music and then, like, literally helping people, being able to give to people. Mm. Um, I paid someone's rent, like, two days ago. Uh, you know, they were struggling. Mm. Really struggling. Like, here you go. Done. Check your PayPal. Mm. It's in there. Um, that stuff just gives me a... I don't know. I mean, maybe call it selfish. It makes me feel good. I think, but, yeah. I mean, I think feeling good is not selfish, though. I think we've somehow been told that it is. I think that uh, when we do good things, you should feel good. You yeah, I mean, it's yeah. pretty pretty simple. I think it's the the universal laws. Like, I mean, there's a reason why like religion te- like do good unto others. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like like the crazy thing is because I just actually uh, got my bro- my brother just started praying like four days ago. Mm. Um, and he's like, man, there's something to it. He's like, I do it, I feel better, and I'm just like, and there's there is something to it. And I uh, I, I don't really believe in coincidence anymore. Mm. Um, there's too many things in my life that are happening, too many signs. And I would say that you gotta be like open to them. Like it's always been. Regardless with anything, Anabar, YouTube, music, anything, um, if I'm receptive to it, the sign, the path is there in front of me. Mm-hmm. And there's signs everywhere. But you can't just go through life with blinders on. You can't go through life with your head in your phone mm. 24-7. You have to have your eyes open. You got to be like, because the littlest, because I mean, one decision can change your entire life. Mm. For better or for worse. Absolutely. One decision can. And like, I think about like... Um, you know, had I not decided to make that one video about Greg's diet, mm. right? Had like that, had I not like done that, maybe my channel wouldn't have been as big. Maybe we dropped Anna Bar and I wouldn't have had like all of it, mm. like all of it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just um, I'm thankful for where I'm at. I'm blessed, extremely. I'm happy, and um, yeah, I feel like this is still just the beginning. Mm. Bro, we're going to wrap it right there. Have to. <laughs> Have to. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, man. Great conversation, yeah, dude. Nice to, find, nice to yeah. finally meet you. Yeah, it was awesome. awesome. Yes. Really, really way, way better than I thought it would be. Not not because I had low expectations, but just because uh, you're a real one, dude. It's awesome. Appreciate you, brother. You as well, big dog. We'll have, Thanks, to, do, we'll have to catch up into this again yeah, soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool, man. That's it. All right. See you guys. I'll do intros, outros separate. Uh, okay. At home. So we'll be good to go. Yo, this is awesome. Let me help you clean up, bro. Yeah, was, easy, I, I really appreciate you, brother. No problem, that was man. Freaking awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. I I, I, I love, I love, uh, I said, that's why I wanted to do a podcast. Oh, man, you'd be good at it, bro. Got to get some, got to get some of your, your guests. You, got, you guys probably have a lot of connections down here, too. Yeah, we do. Um, to an animal bar. I have a, uh, I have a buddy that, um, I'll get this audio on the computer for you. You're good, yeah. Um, I have a buddy that uh, Max Tuning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know he, his brother real well, actually. We, yeah, Chase. We lived next to each other for a long time. Yeah, Chase. I gave him Molly once at a party. <laughs> uh, 